What's going on, everybody? I'm the Benefactor. I'm an independent researcher looking into the rodent coil and other areas of fringe science. You can call me the Bill Nye of fringe science if you like. I try to teach these uh, complicated and convoluted areas of science to a more general uh, audience. And today we are going to be preparing our rodent coil frame for our full day workshop, which will be, uh, I have it scheduled right now for the 8th, Sunday, um, because I do not have enough funds to buy the coil. It is kind of expensive. It's like $80. I have like um, half of that. So if anybody wants to donate and speed up that process, uh, my cash app is linked in the description. It is Beneficence TV. Um, but today we are going to be going over how to build the coil frame, how to put it together. And I'll also be going over some of the uh, materials or actually all the materials that you'll need for the workshop. So it's not, it's not that uh, involved, but I want to make sure that everybody who attends the class um, has all the materials ready so they can build it. Hey, what's going on, Joe? How you doing, Delta KB? Um, everybody's here, it looks like. Uh, we're gonna um, plug in the glue gun, let it heat up for a minute. Obviously, we're gonna be using a glue gun for this. I don't recommend anything else, um, simply because the plastic is so thick and you want it to be sturdy, unless you have a more, um, more durable adhesive. This is the... Um, the cheap and uh, convenient solution right here. And again, this setup is specifically to save you money. So um, yeah, if you have more expensive equipment and materials, feel free to use them. But the, the way that I'm doing it is the cheapest way um, possible without um, affecting the uh, efficiency. So uh, this um, coil frame, I believe uh, is Dragon7. I think that's his name, Dragon7. I have it linked in the do-it-yourself guide. I'm going to put it in the chat in a minute. But uh, the, the coil frames themselves come from Alchemical Science. Um, he has, uh, J uh, Jordan from Alchemical Science has a custom frame that I am not using. I'm using the Dragon7, I believe, uh, coil frame. Very basic. Um, still the vortex based math based mass uh, based math spacing and geometry it should do just fine it's what i'm using for my other coil as you can see here uh oh, right there that coil though is um a little bit smaller than this one this is the full size one this is the big daddy so we're going to plug in the uh, glue gun let it heat up a minute uh, i'll catch up on chat and put my gloves on and um, we'll get started. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. You like the cone on the rodent coil? Yeah, it says uh, great job or well done or something like that. <laughs> Mm. 
<laughs> Sean says he loves the ending. Are you talking about of the live stream uh, um, video that I made? I thought it was pretty cool. All right, so as you can see here, when you get your printout, you will have uh, a big center uh, disc that will fit your smaller rings. And depending on this, the, uh, the coil design, you could have more or less rings, but I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. You have 13. No, 12. So I have 12 here. I think uh, Nathan was um, gracious enough to print me an extra one. So what we're gonna do is just one by one, we're gonna fit them like this and go around. But we're gonna do it one by one. And we're just gonna go around the edge. I don't know if you can see it right here. Go around just a thin layer on the edge on either side. And that's all you need. And then you let that dry for a minute and then you move on to the next one. And again, these easy um, sliding disc coil frames were um, contrived from First Stop Energies, uh, Daniel and Erica Nunez's, uh, 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 Daniel and Erica Nunez and their team. So uh, this is all thanks to them that we have these sliding disc frames before people were using the just the donut, and that was very hard to do. Again, you don't want to overdo it. You just want to get a thin layer so those two surfaces are bonded. Keep, uh, make sure you keep pressure and keep them together because uh, if they're, they're not, um, if the epoxy is not dry and, and uh, hardened, then it could, the disc could slip out. So make sure that you have a firm grip on it while you're doing this. Just a little bit at a time, spread it if you have to. I'm just gonna take it a little bit at a time. And it's very simple. It's, uh, you know, put on some music. It's a, it's a meditating, experience if you ask me making these coils it's very um mellow very cool so now we are having a spiritual experience making a rodent coil There's a shadow person behind. No, that's my girlfriend. Uh, she's probably going into the kitchen. This is a one bedroom apartment. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, I just put a little bit on either side 
I'm continuing to hold it though. I'm continuing to put tension on it. I want to do that for at least, you know, three or four minutes, give it some time to, to dry out, put a fan on it if you have to, but you can see, see as it turning, it's starting to turn a little white. That's the process of, sorry about the autofocus. There we go. But um, that's the process of it drying. It doesn't take too long, but for it to fully cure, we want to leave it at least 24 hours. That's what I recommend. And that's why I'm doing this ahead of time. I wanna make sure that this is um, set up and it's good in place and it's not gonna jiggle or wiggle. All right, now uh, at this point, I'm gonna loosen it up a little bit and just see how it holds. It seems to be pretty, pretty stable, pretty holding pretty good. Just give it a slight jiggle. Yep. Okay. So we're going to set that here and catch up on chat. Let that dry for a second before we move on to the next one. We got 11 more of these to go. And then I'll go over the entire material list. Um, and actually, while I have a minute, I'm going to put the do it yourself guide in the chat so you can do and take a peek at that. Um, if you're ahead of the class. All right, so that is the link to the do-it-yourself guide that I whipped up for the rodent coil here in the setup. This is, uh, if you want to follow along easy, more easily with the class, I recommend that you um, have this up and uh, looking at it. There's pictures in there, and, and it gives you information more detailed than my videos on how to set up the, the rodent coil with this, you know, pretty much any stereo amp receiver. Tomorrow I'm getting a new stereo amp receiver, and we're going to, test it out on a new one. I'm kind of excited to do that because, you know, that that old stereo amp receiver I was using, it was an Insignia RS2001, which was uh, the exact one that Daniel Nunez was uh, using in his experiments. And I got that for a reason, but it was old. You know, you could tell uh, the back was a little corroded, so it was used. And eventually on live stream, it just blew up. So we're going to be testing that out tomorrow um, probably maybe either before the fringe think tank, or if Nathan decides, um, uh, he, he wants to have something like that on the show. Uh, I can do a little demo of that as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll see, but tomorrow we're going to hook that up. I plan on that as long as it gets in the mail, uh, gets here. It's, it's coming in the mail from Amazon. So again, there are variables that are dependent. Hey, Nathan, how you doing? What's going on? Good to have you here. Everybody's excited to have Nathan in the house. <laughs> He's uh, our local celebrity. <laughs> uh, anyways, Ben, haven't forgot about emailing you back. Uh, we'll get to it. Yeah, no, no. Uh, anytime you get to it, you get to it. You know, uh, I realize we're all busy. We have lives and sometimes we forget. So I know, I know God knows I do. So prayers for Panda Cat. What happened to Panda Cat? Uh, I missed something. Oh, oh your cat's in hospice. I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, lots of prayers for Panda Cat. 
Yeah. You know, animals, especially the domesticated ones, they're our responsibility to take care of because we domesticated them. You know, we put them in this world that uh, they're not naturally supposed to be in. So it's our job to take care of them. All right, let's move on to the next ring. Oh, it looks like I have to reload my gun. Looks about right. All right. Now again, we're going to slide the nuts, small disc in, and keep a firm grip on it. I recommend pinching it at either point. See, I have my uh, middle finger on one end and the thumb on the other end. So that's what I recommend. You can even switch if you have to, but always keep that pressure on it to make sure that this is bonded correctly because you don't want it uneven. Again, this is, you know, this, this uh, coil is about symmetry. And I, even though I screwed up a couple of parts on uh, this coil over here, my first one, uh, it still worked. So I was actually surprised, but um, you want it as even as possible. So if any, uh, everybody wants to go ahead and introduce themselves to chat, um, this is considered a class. I know it's a pre-workshop, but it is a class. So feel free to take this opportunity to introduce yourself. And uh, if you intend to make it to the full class, let us know. Going to do a little bit at a time. I might have to set this down. Actually, no, I got it. See, this is a awkward moment because I have to make sure there's tension on the reloaded cartridge here. This is a very poor design. It's very cheap. But just keep pumping it, and it should work. There we go. You almost have to be an octopus to do this. Yeah, I might have to set it down for a second. just using the reloaded cartridge to push the end of the expended cartridge here. You know how these cheap glue gun designs are. There's a catch mechanism and it has to catch the new one. So I have to push it. So anyways, remember tension on the ring, eye on the ball. Well, you get the idea. And just slowly. It's still not coming through. I have to push it a little bit more.
This must be stuck. We're going to give that a minute. Might be the heating element. All right, I'm going to be right back. I think it's clogged. I'm going to get something to unclog it. tool and what this does is it sucks up um, any excess solder when you melt it so you know uh, you have to do that real, real quick so what I'm gonna do is heat this up again and see if it sucks it out it's just a little cloth it's all it's not old but it's just cheap it's real cheap Uh, you had a question. Let's see. What was your question? Hey, could you post your question again? I don't see it. Oh, what is your thoughts on this? I think free energy comes from the reverse energy or the spike of collapsed magnetic field. Yes, that, I mean that's the that's actually the theory that Nathan was going over. It's it's uh, the reverse spike. In the, in the collapse of the field. Um, that's something that um, Bedini talks about a lot, actually. 
So you're, you're right on the money there in terms of what our theories are. Again, these are all theories. Until mainstream science wants to man up and start doing some of these tests too. I think that's the me off section. I have to get a needle. All right, I'll find something to stick up there. There we go. Yeah, baby. Now we're talking. Shove that bad boy in there. Now we're cocked, locked, and ready to rock. Yep, there we go. Cool. All right, remember, pinch point. Thumb and middle finger or whatever finger you prefer. Tension on the ring and gently apply like so. And if you miss any spots, because I know when it dries, sometimes you notice, oh, I missed a little spot here or two, feel free. Go over it with some second details, you know. Every good paint job needs a second coat. Am I right? All right, one side done. Very carefully. I want to angle it. All right. So second ring is done. We're still going to apply tension, though, for a minute before we let go and let it dry for a little bit. We'll, we'll check the first one. First one looks good. Yeah, first one's actually pretty dry. And it's deceiving. It doesn't, it, it feels like it's all the way dry, but it's not. You, you, it, to fully cure, you have to give it some, I think they recommend like six hours, but I would say 24 hours, you know, and depending on the moisture content of the atmosphere that it's curing in, that could affect it. All sorts of variables, but at the end of the day, this thing is, is very efficient at what it does. And when we hook it up, you'll see that it actually generates more energy than it takes in. It's accessing the zero point and generating that extra or opening a, basically opening a, a gateway to that extra energy that's all around us. And it's fairly easy to do. You just follow some simple rules. Don't make the silly mistakes that I've seen. Um, countless people do trying to recreate these coils and you'll be good. All right, we're gonna set that down. And before we go on to the next one, I'm gonna catch up on chat here and see what's going on. Uh, 
a reaction from perturbation of the ether. Yes, exactly. Um, when you're generating the electromotive force, you're perturbing the ether essentially, and people just ignore that pertur perturbation. Um, the effects of it are, you know, like back EMF, you see that back EMF uh, in circuits and people just are taught to ignore it or um, push it out of the system because it's, you know, the, they consider it noise, but it's not. It's extra energy that you can utilize if utilized correctly. It's negative energy or negative electricity, sorry. It's energy, energy is energy, but it's, it's negative electricity. Hey, we got old man Nathan, uh, old man builds in here. Nathan, you want to come on? <laughs> old man. <laughs> I need to see what's going on. Yeah, hey, how's it going, everyone? As I said, we're our, our local celebrity. <laughs> so I got, there you go. I had to pause my thing. I was watching your show at the same time. So I yeah, see you're gluing it. What, what else is going on there? Sorry, I was just finishing up my live stream stuff. No, 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 you're good. I was, I was trying to catch some of it myself. You're talking about some cool UFO stuff. I have to go over it later because that was pretty interesting. <laughs> so, uh, what's yeah, up, right everyone? now. So, right everybody just, uh, out there in the chat. What's going on, guys? Yeah, we got Nathan in the house. Uh, Nathan from Old Man Builds, and he's reverse engineering the Gravel Flyer. Oh, sorry. Oh, these things. I don't have my... Uh... Hearing aids in, man, kind of <laughs> messes with my ears a little bit. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, it's all good. So I was just explaining, um, we're, we're putting together the frame here, and it's just simple. We got a glue gun. We're going to take our time with it and apply a little bit on the sides. And um, I was explaining how uh, we want to do this ahead of time to give it enough time to cure, you know? Yeah, I thought... Uh... Super glue on it uh, when you put in each one and mm -hmm. then hot glue it afterwards. That way they stay right where you want them. And mm -hmm. you can just, you know I mean, go in a little quicker. But one at a time is cool. As long as it works. Yeah. Yeah. This is a process um, that uh, I don't recommend rushing because, like I said, it's it could be very meditative. You know, it's a Zen. It's a Zen experience, you know, making these coils, any coil, really. Ben's going to another dimension over here building his coil. I get oh, it. Yeah. Picture now it's going to work. I get it. Right on. But, uh, yeah, so as you can see, this is the big daddy. And we're going to be using um, a red magnetic wire. So it's going to be a fireball, literally. <laughs> what, what, size, uh, what size are you using, Ben? Uh, wire is, is going to be 24 uh, gauge. Nice. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, um, I was just uh, explaining earlier, I was planning on doing it uh, the um, the first, the Sunday, the first, but um, uh, my budget constraints, uh, um, I had to push that back a week. So uh, when I get that wiring, because, you know, wire is expensive. It's like 80 bucks for that spool. And I wanted to get um, the five pound spool so I have an extra, you know. Yeah. Well, how much did it take last time in the big spool you used? So last time it actually um, didn't take uh, the full spool. I used a one pound and it took a little less than half, I believe, or no, a little more than half. So, well, that's a bigger coil too. That thing, when I printed it out, man, I'll be yeah. honest with you. I looked at the center hole and I'm going, man, that doesn't look anything like the size of his. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, um, I think I, I remember uh, decreasing the size of it when I printed it out, the, the original frame. So this might be the full size. Yeah, the cool thing is, is now you want to rotate the magnet in there. You may mm -hmm. not even need the little bowl that you put it in. You, you have plenty of size in there now. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and also in here, let me set this down so I can sh give you a visual here. Um, this until you wind something like this, until you wind something like this, you really don't know what you're getting into. When you spool your, your wire, you want to have something not like a traditional spool. You want to have it long, right? So you can fit it through the hole. 
right? And that's one of the biggest challenges is if you do in a small one, you have to fit your spool through the hole or just do it, feed the line individually like I did with the smaller one. But hey Ben, give everybody a perspective there. What the, what size pipe is that? And then what, what size of the hole you think there is? I'm not sure. I'd have to measure it. About a one inch pipe right there? Yeah, about a one inch and... Maybe inch and a half at the most. Right. So it's got to be like a three or four inch hole? At least. Yeah, maybe six inches, I'd say. A that six inch pretty hole. Big. Yeah. So this might be two inches diameter. Two inch? Really? Yeah. That's one big hole in there. I, I, I knew it was big. I forgot how big it was. But it is nice. It's it's I like the big design because it's the full design that we're supposed to be working with. You know, it's the full size coil. And um, it we should see a lot uh, more stable energy coming out of here, I would assume. That's so cool. Yeah, I can't wait till you get it all done, man, because uh, I'd I like I'd like to see that magnet. Just put a little dot on it or line on it so we can see where the rotation's going. You know, it's close. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. That is a great idea. So somebody brought that up in chat, and that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. Um, assuming I get the new stereo amp receiver, I ordered a newer one, a, a smaller one, but a, a better one. Okay. Um, and I'm going to hook it up to the the green coil that I have over there. And um, I don't know. Uh, we'll we'll run some experiments, but I could definitely do that tomorrow. Test. It I would, out. Do you have diodes? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Try a couple diodes on your way out. So mm -hmm. see, make sure, any, sure anything doesn't pull back on it like it did last time. Right. So so I'd, I'd try it out and see if it works. You know what I mean? Just hook it to a speaker mm -hmm. with a couple diodes in it. Just make sure it flows one way and it doesn't give you anything, any losses. So just put the diode in between the speaker wire? Yeah, well, like, you know how you uh, your speaker wire comes in, you put a diode here, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you, it goes into your speaker right here. So you okay. just want to see if it has a difference in sound so that you know when you're doing testing if there's mm -hmm. a difference or if it works at all. That's a, probably a perfect way to test it and then go ahead and put it in your machine. That way you know, hey, if it if it pushes back, it's not the, the back EMF's not going to kill my receiver again. Right, yeah. So if it shuts down from the back EMF, then then, then I know this is probably not going to last very long. Like, <laughs> Well, yeah. But, yeah, you want to give it a, kind of a test before you... Yeah, run it through. <laughs> you don't want to keep blowing them up. You don't but want I can to be just like use me. like a. I can just use the LED diode. Uh, I don't know. You, you don't have to test it out. Whatever it's going to mm. blow before it blows your system is what you want. Is there anything that'll push it back? Yeah, I mean, you could try LED diodes and see if it, see if it even does anything or has any loss in power. Mm. I I I, I would test it a little more for you. You know, I mean, run right into it. You don't you don't want to have something blow up you just bought. I think no, I, I do have a couple of directional diodes that that aren't LED diodes that I could just hook it up to, and then uh, just put the um, the positive towards the speaker, right? Yeah. So basically, uh, they have that little line in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the positive, I think. Or is so that the negative? flow goes into the line. So the big right. side uh, on, on the black on the diode would be on this side where mm -hmm. your source comes from, and then you hit the line, and then that side that goes out. That's your uh, that's your flow direction. Okay, so I want that to be facing back towards the speaker. Yeah, just, just think of it as the little gray line when you look at it. The mm. shorter side is the side that it can't go in. That's the way I always see it. Make well, it that makes easier. sense. Um, uh, with this, uh, with the spool, um, after we get done with the frame and I go over the the materials list that we're, equipment's list that we're going to need. I'm going to um, saw off a couple of sections on either end. So we'll make a nice groove to wind the coil. Hmm. Right on. So we're going to get our hands dirty here. <laughs> How long does it usually take, over. Ben? Uh, to make a coil? To, to make the winding for it. Uh, you talk about actually winding the, the, the coil? No, 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 uh, winding. From what I understand, you have to tie it to a post and then you you, you oh it. to twist oh to buy fire yeah, yeah to and twist then, it then you wind it on your pipe to get it ready. Um, I'd say anywhere around twenty to thirty minutes if you're you know quick and you're not obstructed. Like 
I had some oh, obstructions. Bro. I'm in a, yeah, I'm, I'm in an apartment. Um, so in the back, people might be walking around, you know, like, so I have to block it off with cones and, and make sure somebody's standing there. So nobody like hurts themselves and I gotta be quick about it. So I did it in about 20, 30 minutes. And that's, again, you have to go back and forth from one post to the other 24 times to make, oh. but, but, and here's the thing. Um, if you don't have enough wire, if we run out of wire or, um, you just want to do some experimenting otherwise, as long as you keep it an even number between the channels, like 12, you know, 16, 18, it should produce some kind of over unity effect for you. As long so as it's not. How do you calculate the distance that you need to go? Because it's a bigger coil than what you used last time. So I'm just going off of what Daniel Nunez said. And last okay. time, last time um, I forgot that I had shrunk the coil frame and uh i was doing 50 feet and it was way too long it gave me a lot extra honestly okay so i'm assuming that 50 feet is going to be good for this one but i'm going to do 55 just to give it some extra wiggle room uh because i don't know if that 50 feet is just going to come right up to the end or because i like to have a little bit of space for the the leads coming out okay um yeah so it and uh, again, last time, I think I twisted it too tight. And this time we're not gonna do it so tight. We're just going to check it periodically and twist it enough so they don't come apart, right? I think last time I twisted them a little bit too tight and that tension, it broke one of the wires. Like it micro fractured all, yeah. And it didn't produce the, um, it wouldn't flow electricity through it. So I had to disconnect another wire to even it out. And that's where we're at with the green one. But, you know, this one should be a perfect, you know, this one should be perfect. And this, honestly, I'm excited because this one will be perfect for phase two of testing with the Bedini circuit. And so I'm really. Just to repair that, if you can get to it, let's say if you can get to it, you have to strip it, you have to solder it, and then you have to put another coating on it. Okay. Mm. So you want to maybe get a spray coating to, to put a couple coats on it, or the, the better one is like a brush coating. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, so you can repair it. Yeah, you can repair it oh, to, okay. to fix it. But the, the whole thing is that wire comes with a coating on it. Because mm. it's just basic copper wire, but then it has a coating on it. And the coating is so thick. So if you can separate it just a little bit to get that coating on there, a piece of paper in there, something like that, get a mm. nice coat on it and then rejoin it, you can reattach it. It's oh, People nice. do it with their Tesla coils. It's never perfect, but mm. it will get you through to test it. Right. I can imagine people fry out wires all the time with the Tesla coil experimenting. <laughs> it's frustrating, man, when you get to a real thin wire on a Tesla coil and it breaks. Yeah. Mm. Right, right here, uh, some guy said 50 feet is way too short. So that's uh, Bug this, Irish. This one? Hold on. That's our buddy Ian right there. Yeah. He said 50 feet is way too short. So give them the dimensions uh, like me, side to side. Like put another wheel on the opposite side and give a dimension so we can. So I'm going to bring the other coil up here in a second. One second. And I'm going to put them side by side too. Give me one second. I'm going to bring this other coil up. Well, that's a good idea right there. Yeah, Ian's right. Use rope. Check it out. Make sure you got the right length. Hey, Ben. Yes, uh, that is a good idea. I didn't think of that. So oh, this, you heard it? Okay. Yes. So this is just a comparison. Here, let me back up a little bit. I'd go to the dollar store and pick up a dollar, you know, rope. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's like way bigger. Yeah. So this is almost like a, a POE mini. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's a good size different right there. That's for sure. Like I said, it's a fireball. <laughs> yeah, I, I would definitely do the rope. Yeah, no, let's do the rope. That's a great idea because uh, Bog is right. I'm sorry, Ian is right. Um, this might, you know, I have no idea how much wire I'm going to need. I'm just estimating. And I don't want to buy a big spool of wire and screw it up and waste all, you know. Yeah, that's a, that, that'd be a loss right there. That's for sure. A good idea there, Ian. He should know, man. He sent me some calls today, man. He's working hard over there. Right. 
Yeah, no, it's actually let, let's put this on the side so it can stand up here. But yeah, no, Ian's he's made some good stuff, and I'm excited. So, um, it says right here, what size coil? I could figure it out for you. So get, if you have a dimensional distance between the two, of the two wheels there, you got a tape measure, Ben. Let's see. I think I do. Give me one second. Yeah, we'll give everybody an idea of what's going on here. You know what I mean? What we're looking at. That way, you know, I'd love to just do it once. Or Ben would probably. God, I, I don't know if I could deal with that. The little hooks they have when you build them like this, I, I would put them straight. I, I don't like those little hooks that go in there. Like that. I know there's a reason for them, but it just looks like a chip wire to me. You know what I mean? Take the coating off of it. So... Let's see what we got. Hey, Ben, we can't hear you. Your mic's off. My bad. <laughs> you want me to measure the inner diameter? Well, give them the inner and give them the outer. Okay. You know what I mean? So let's measure the outer first. Okay, we got the outer diameter. Just under 10 inches. So just under 10 inches for the outer diameter and the inner diameter. I love what Ian says, just use the rope. My math isn't good enough to figure it out. <laughs> Four and a half inches for the inner diameter. Wow, that's big. I yes. can fit my Tesla coil in the center of that. <laughs> hey, that would be an experiment. <laughs> that would be a good experiment for uh, one yep. live stream. Look, the one right over there, man, that, that gold-looking one right there. Mm -hmm. Both of them are four-inch diameter, man. So they go right in the center of that. And That'd then the two cool. fields combine. Oh, wow. That would be crazy. I wonder what would happen. What if the, the, the donut just shoots right up? <laughs> oh. That would be cool, man. That would definitely be cool. <laughs> All right. We're going to go on to this next ring. Um, so, Nathan, what have you been up to today? You know what, man? I'm just going through, and I, I've been talking about the field and stuff like that, and I, I wanted to get it out there exactly what was going on with it and how it looked because a lot of people are confused. And even when we did it live uh, last week, it was like, there's still a lot of confusion. Yeah. And I talked to Gerald about it and we kind of came up with a kind of a middle ground a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this pretty much presents what it is. So that's kind of what I was up to today. Just working on that. And I had to clean out my garage. God, Ben, I had stuff <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. I, I got to do doing, some cleaning too. <laughs> I've been resetting my high voltage stuff. So I've been, you know, blasting some stuff out. Right. And I got stuff all over the desk to worry about, you know, the yeah. island behind me. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's, that's the thing, you know, you get, you get to having fun building some stuff. And after a while you look behind you and there's a bunch of big mess. <laughs> you got to clean oh, it up. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. That's real bad. Yeah. I have to, have to get back to work in here and clean some things up eventually. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I got some molding to put around the door. I got a light to fix. You can see it behind me on this side. It's hanging there because I, I put that room in and I had lights in my ceiling and now I got one hanging. So now I just, I need, it, it can't go back up in there. You know what I mean? Like that. It's got to get, uh, you know what right. I mean? Run a new wire. So I'm a fat guy, man. And it was 110 degrees outside. I'm not getting in that attic. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's a disaster waiting to happen. Free wheelies coming through the roof at that point. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just all kinds of wrong. So I decided to wait and let it cool off a little bit and I'll fix it. Yeah. Yeah, you, you definitely don't want to overheat yourself. I know <laughs> it's tempting to work and, and when it's really, really hot out. But if you can't or if you, if you have a, another choice, you know, take the day off because – you know, I was out there and I seen guys, you know, I'm out there in construction. I see guys all the time that try to push it and they end up fainting or, you know, passing out or throwing up.
be kind to your body, you know? Yeah. And uh, stay hydrated. Man, I used to work construction. It sucks. Yeah, it Nothing does fun suck. about it. Like, mm. you can have fun on the job site when you... When, when, when you're ribbing somebody, you know what I mean? But uh, it's not fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's uh, it's exhausting. You know, it's it's tiring. And, you know, working with concrete, it's corrosive material. It dries out your hands no matter how many gloves you put on. You know, it still dries out your – it's crazy. But, um, so what yeah, do you there do was out there, Ben? You, uh, you lay in the concrete or, or no. you doing porn foundations? What do you got? I'm a construction technician, okay. so um, I'm certified to go in and test uh, um, density with a nuclear density uh, gauge, and also I test the integrity of the concrete. So there's different specs for the concrete, and I determine if, if it passes those specs and if they can place the concrete. So, nice. Yeah, I've worked on big projects. I worked on the Gordy Howe project, which is the biggest infrastructure project in North America right now. That was fun. Um, yeah, I worked a, a lot of cool places. Been a lot of cool places. So the first one that gets the concrete out is you. You test it, and then they can pour it if it's good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, sometimes they pour it anyways, and, you know, it all depends on what they're pouring for. You know, if it if it's just a tiny little patch in the ground that's a sidewalk, you know, for the city, they might not care. You know, if it's like barely making it or it just under the spec or whatever. But uh, most of the time, um, it's not for me to decide. I just test it, you know. Yeah. Do you have to test the dirt as well to see how much compaction there is? Or is that not your part? That is? No, no, that's that's part of nuclear density. So I take the nuclear density gauge, which has uh, cesium-127 and americium-235. So, uh, I forget what the isotope of americium, but it has two different uh, radioactive isotopes in it um, to determine the moisture content and the density content. And, you know, there's different scientific tests that you can do. Uh, we, we first establish the maximum density of the material by pounding out uh, a mold, and uh, we compare the compaction levels uh, what the gauge picks up. And, nice. you know, it's very... Very, very scientific, but it's fun. You know, like it's honestly what kind of inspired me to do science and get into the, some of the stuff like, yeah, science is fun. I should probably get back into it. <laughs> All right. Well, we're glad you did, man. I love this stuff. Yeah. So we got three rings down. Moving right along. Is there anything that uh, anybody wants to ask or any videos that you guys want us to pull up and, and chat about while I'm working on the ring here? No, what do we got here? Old CRT TV. Hmm. Good source of magnet wire, really. Oh. I tear those things apart, man. The first thing I do is I connect the, the negative to the wire that goes around the tube, right? So that's where it goes. Then you go on the bottom and you connect your positive to the circuit and you get high voltage sparks in between. So I'm over there turning on and off the TV with the remote and my sparks going on and off. <laughs> I, I love doing that. I should just buy a remote control for my sparks and I'd be just the happiest guy in the world. You know what I mean? Put a, put a dimmer switch on it. I'd be playing all day. Dude, you would be if you were a DJ, you would be timing your sparks to the music. <laughs> oh, dude, don't think that I'm not building that mer music circuit again. Watch, I'm gonna have a music circuit out, and then I won't put up the volume because YouTube won't allow it. But I'm gonna rock some ACDC Thunderstruck on it with some high voltage and let it just fly, you know what I mean, and see what it, it does. You know, that's why I like streaming on Twitch. Sometimes I'll string on stream on Twitch. Because uh, if you, as long as you don't save the VODs or have the option where it saves your live streams, you can stream whatever you want pretty much, and they don't care. And uh, you can just jam out to whatever. Like if I really want to jam out on live stream to some music and I'm kind of frustrated and I, I need the music, I will load up Twitch instead, you know. Mm. And give, uh, but, I, you know, it's I don't have a lot of audience there, but, you know, it's just honestly it's more for me. Yeah, well... You should see me when I'm building my testicle. I had 
I had to use some small wire, right? So I'm over there with 32 gauge wire. I took mm. my wife's eyeglasses. She uses to read. Okay, <laughs> mind you, my eyes are perfect. It's not that I put them on. I had them on the tip of my nose, so I look like a really old guy. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't see where the wires came together at. Right. So I'm over there rocking out. You know what I mean to all kinds of music, and then YouTube decides whoever's playing with that thing or automatic or whatever it does. It changed my music on me. So before I knew it, I was going from heavy metal to just classical music. And I'm wondering <laughs> what the heck happened here, man. And I'm still trying to wind this thing. And I just, dude, I had to tape it and stop. I go, I'm going to sleep winding this thing, doing that. My eyes are getting worse. You're looking down, it makes you like tired when you look at the glasses. It just, it's bad, man. So <laughs> I, I had to fix my playlist before I did it again. So Ian just posted uh, one of the Nunes video how to make um, the bundle. I believe that's the um, POE vortex coil and how it's made video. If that's yep. it, I'll pull it up. Yeah, let's pull it up because that's that's a good video and uh, that'll give you a little bit. Anybody who's new to this, uh, more context. Look at that. There you go. Oh, I found a playlist. We'll we'll play the playlist. And it's it's got this video in it. So yeah, we'll 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 play some of these videos while I'm doing this and we'll have some conversation. Some commentary. Let's see, let's pull that up here. Share the screen. All right, I'm gonna mute the music because I don't know if it's copyright or not. Hello everyone, I'm Erica Nunez with OneStopEnergies.com and today I'm gonna show you how to make your own POE Vortex Coil. You know, I watched this video. For step one. So this is a really good video, but there's a couple of areas that it's a little confusing at the end and I'd like to um, clarify that too while I have the opportunity here with, with anybody. Yeah. We're going to set up two hooks 50 feet away from each other. Thank you for moderating the chat, by the way, Nathan. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, no problem. Just trying to help, man. We're all yeah, having no. a good time. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is fun. Securely tie your wire around the hook. I wish I could just do this all day, make these coils. <laughs> Honestly, I'd have fun. Now walk the wire back and forth 24 times. Yeah, that's about the size of the spool you got, right, Ben? Yeah. Yep. So they recommend for their coil 50 feet, which turns out to be, I think you need 1,200 feet of coil, something like that. So 50 times 24. But you'll see they really have really nothing at the end. I don't know if they cut it off or what, but, you know, it, it looks like they have almost nothing at the end. Step five. Snip the wire from the spool and tie it around the bundle. Tighten And here's a fun ingenious part that they, I don't know, I, I've never seen anybody else do with this method, and it's fucking, it's ingenious. Sorry, I didn't make this. Yeah, I, I saw Bedini do it when he did his uh, coil. He did the same thing. Oh, and so then, they might have got it from Bedini. Yeah, he kind of stood like uh, a little bit away when you first start, and then he walked it as somebody else did it. That way it stays mm. tight the whole time. Oh, yeah, exactly. And um, you want to pull it tight uh, because if you don't, you'll end up with a, a, a loose spot where it's kind of like all bundled. And then this one little wire is kind of hanging with a loop on the end like mine. Mine yeah, has that, that at the end. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's why he walks it. So he, he starts off real close and then he mm. holds the wire as it's spinning in his hand. And mm. then he walks it back so you don't get any of those loops. 
Mm. So he starts off close, and then he walks it back. And he walks it back, yeah, as it, as it starts to wind tight. You got two mm. people to do it. It's easier when you do it by yourself. It, it's bad. Yeah, it's it is easier with two people. Um, but I mean, as long as those uh, wires are you know bound together, it should be fine. You know, I want it to be as symmetrical as possible, obviously. But you know, we we'll we'll make do with what we can do. You know. Um, but uh, oh, real quick. Um, while I remember. They're twisting, and I don't think they they don't mention that there's any. So so they're twisting it clockwise, right? But they don't mention if there's any difference when if they, you twist it clockwise or counterclockwise. But I'm going to be continuing doing what they're doing. I'm just you know I don't want to stray from what they do. Hmm. So uh, when I twist it, I'm going to be doing what they do and twisting it clockwise. But well, I, if you if you make another I don't know one if it makes same it size, do it the other way. Yeah, see what happens. And the, yeah. Well, what happens when they interact together? That'd be cool too. Because mm -hmm. it's twisting a different way, and I don't know. Maybe maybe it's it won't make a difference because the interference pattern is interfering with itself, and it's really that that matters. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I I don't know, but it's it's fascinating to think about, and I'll definitely try it in the future. Step seven. Now it's time to twist. Now, um, if you do have a second person with you, make sure they are wearing gloves because uh, when you're twisting this, this is wire and it can cut you. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you do it real slowly and you're careful, but I don't recommend it. I would wear gloves. Hmm. Yeah, she does. Whoop, right on through it. They make it always look so easy. I know, and you know, but you could tell like these these guys they're um, they're not professionals; they're amateurs who were put in a position where they had to learn all this stuff. You know, like like uh, um, this wasn't their career. They were, uh, I think, uh, uh, Daniel was a model and an actor, and I don't know what Erica did, but uh, you know, they they kind of pivoted and started learning all this stuff over the course of like 10, 15 years, and. They collaborated with Randy Powell and and uh, all sorts of uh, interesting people to teach them this stuff. Now that we yeah, you can see their school the here. See, they, they have a, a little bit more um, professional cutout. I'm gonna have to end up just snapping off the ends if I can, or. <laughs> I'm to school it. You don't have a Dremel? No, I don't. I mean, I don't have a lot of uh, equipment here. I don't have access to a lot. I have to make do with what I have a little handsaw. That's, that's what I bought. So if that works, okay. it works. Check it out, Ben. Take some 80 grit sandpaper, okay? Take a block mm -hmm. of wood or whatever it can fit in there. Like it could be a piece of metal, anything. All you have to do is sand it real quick, okay, with mm -hmm. the 80, then change to a 220. And then it'll polish it out most of the way. Okay. It'll get rid mm. of all the rough edges on the corners when you cut it. Like if you just do it with a uh, like a regular saw blade or something, mm -hmm. you, you always want to hit it with a little bit of sandpaper to smooth it out because that wire has that coating and you don't want to rip no, that that's, off. That's that's a good point. I didn't consider that. Yeah, you even, said uh what, what was the, the grade? What was the grade of sandpaper? I'm gonna write that down in chat real quick so I don't forget. I used, uh, 80 and then 80. 220. And 220. So 80 first, then 220. Yeah, and, and 80 is really like heavy grit, so it'll tear down the stuff real quick. 220 is more of a si finer one. It'll clean mm. it up, and then you can always, if you're even worried about it past then, throw a couple of layers of duct tape on it. You know what I mean? Just to mm. get another layer of something on there, so that it doesn't start to cut everything. That's if you're right. really worried about it. it no, no, it, no. This, it, this is a good idea. And honestly, paying attention to those details is very important to me, at least, because I want this coil to be perfect, you know, as perfect as I can make it. And it's like it goes back to what uh, I heard um, Malcolm Bendel say that Martin Fleischman said to him. He said, Malcolm, spend six months preparing the metal and one hour to try to get your result. Don't spend, you know, one hour making the metal. And then six months of, of testing, you know, you have to make 
the design right, you know, and taking your time with it. And when we when we wind it, I'm I'm gonna take my time with it. As you'll see, you know, be gentle with it. Um, because before on this coil, I was rushing it a little bit, and you can notice the the um the subtle uh um imperfections, right? You can you can notice them. I scratched the surface of the enamel on some places, which I was like, oh crap, you know, is that gonna affect it? I had to, you know, I actually put um uh electrical tape on that part, that little part that I scratched, because I didn't know if it would affect it or not. Um, but I mean, it, it seems fine. But this one I want to do right this, you know, I need to do this coil justice, I need to build one that's perfect. So and uh, much, much obliged for the um, the coil frame here, Nathan. Yeah, don't really worry about it. it. Um, yeah, so let's continue on with the video. And we have a whole playlist here that we can, you know, watch and commentate on. Uh, I don't think I checked out the other videos. F9 finds a comfortable spot because now it's time to wind the coil. We will begin by doing the counterclockwise wind first. Up and over. Hey Ben, you got a numbering system for that? At the starting point. You're just gonna skip one above hey, Give me one second. Uh, what do you mean numbering system? Like uh, how to wire it? Yeah, how to keep track of it. Okay, so it's very simple. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's harder at the start or, um, I'm sorry, it's it's easier at the start and um, easier at the end, but in the middle, it's a little confusing. So what you do is you're going to start out, say you start out in the middle here. Uh, let me get it centered. So you're going to start out in the middle here, and then you're going to, mm, well, the ring, the ring over here that you would normally be going to. So let's go to this one. So we're going to do uh, the opposite of way. Sorry. It's a little confusing because the, the, the um, left is right and right is left for the camera. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so say you start out here, you're going to go one over and then up. So it's over one, it's always one over and then up. One over, okay. up at the same time. So it, it's creating that incline, right? And that's that's the pattern that you're gonna want to find, but it get, uh, follow, but it gets a little confusing when you have to go in the center. So when you start to wind it though, and you see the other patterns and you see, oh, that's the one line that fits in between these other two lines, it gets a little easier to see where the pattern is. But when you're first starting out, it's a little confusing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always one over and one up. And we're, okay. um, we're gonna start out doing the counterclockwise, which is to the um, right, and then the, the interference pattern, which is to the left, so. It's it's uh so you go all one pattern and then you go back on it with all the other pattern. Yes. So okay. um, give me one second to seal this last seal up and I'll show you uh, what I mean um, with the interference pattern. Oh, that's no problem. I just I I want to ask the question so we can get it out there of what's going on here. Yes. It, well, this is very important. It is something that. Um, not a lot of coils do the interference pattern. So when you come back up to this, so you're winding, you're winding, you're winding, and you end up back where you started, then you're gonna bend the wire above and downward this direction and start your clockwise wind on the, the underneath. So you're probably gonna have to flip this over, right? So that's where, uh, and then that's where some of the confusion comes. But uh, here, I'll play the video, and, and once I play the video, it'll make a lot more sense with the video. Because yeah, no problem. Let me switch it back. Yeah, yeah they they didn't um, specify a couple of details here that were really important, I think. And that's you know that's when you're rushing these videos or you're an amateur, like you know, like you 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 forget to include stuff, and it's you know. Well, I asked, yeah, they go right to this where they wound the coil already when they were just pulling the wire off. Mm -hmm. So, step 10. When you meet the starting point, now you may begin the clockwise wind. Okay, so you see, right. You meet the starting 
you see right here, she's underneath the starting point at that little notch right underneath it, making the bend on top of it. So you okay. make the bend. So originally you started out with this and you went this way. You went upwards to the right. Now okay. you're going downwards to the right. But when you flip the donut, it's going to be downwards to the left, right? Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to say right. It gets confusing. <laughs> well, but, it's, uh, not, it's, it's not a problem. It's, it's just learning the flow of this thing. Yeah, no, I just, I, I get excited about it because it's really exciting. But at the same time, it's it's a little frustrating because I know I was there with certain people, where, where certain people are now trying to understand oh, what exactly do they mean? And there's a couple of spots at the end of this video hooking it up where I, I was like, oh, wait, what? And I had to, I really had to, you know, look at what they were doing in, in the full context of all their videos to really understand, um, you know, how to connect this thing in a way that actually produces some over unity. Point. Now you may begin the clockwise wind. Just note that after the very first loop, you will be going directly under the starting point. So, so hold, yeah. hold on, Ben. I got a question yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. So these aren't two separate coils. They're one winding all together. Yes. Okay. But uh, so, but uh, the way you uh, the way you hook the wires up does essentially produce two coils. They're just wound together in one bundle. So what you're going to end up doing is you're separating these 24 wires into two channels of 12 and 12, and you're putting each 12 in series. So it's one really really long, or it's two really really long wires. So essentially, it is a one-to-one -one ratio coil. It's a one-to-one -one transformer. Is what it is. Okay. Yeah, and and that's a that's a really good question because not a lot of people realize that it is actually uh, the way. Well, the way you hook it up, it could be three coils. You know, uh, you could have three channels, and a lot of people do experiment with three channels, and that's something that I'll, I'm going to be doing in the future. Well, I I originally thought you you did one wind in one direction. And that was from start to finish, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And then you started to wind a whole new direction with a whole nother wire. You know what I mean? It's a and common mistake. Start to finish. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, you, you would think it, and it is a common mistake. But um, the thing is, you want the energy to travel in one way and then the other way in the same. Okay. You know, that's I guess that's the idea. So as long as and it doesn't, and they said uh, the Nunez say it doesn't matter where it starts and where it finishes as long as it's counter rotational. You have that those two vortices. Oh, uh, one thing real quick uh, right here is what we're going to be doing and they didn't do in this video is uh, when you start the interference pattern, because the, the coil frame sticks pretty well for the, the first um, wind, but when you start the interference pattern, sometimes the, the slots can get a little crowded. This is a little bit bigger, so it might not have an issue, but I'm still going to reinforce the second interference wind with uh, zip ties. So what we're going to do is at each intersection point where the wire intersects with itself, um, like right here, we're going to we're just put a zip tie there, not too tight, and then reinforce it so it stays in place. And that's okay. something they didn't do. It. Yeah, so it's going to help us out with um, if you have to transport it or ship it anywhere. It's just going to help keep that wire in place. Okay. So take it. Step 11. Now that the winding is complete. Yeah, she straight up just went from winding out back to being done real quick. Yeah, you could tell it wasn't a professionally done video, you know, and it's it, not everybody's a video producer. I understand, you know, and even I miss things that I intend to put in my videos and I make. Well, it's not that what I would just say, it's it's the confusing part that they skipped over a little bit. They mm. should have, you know, just gone to that a little bit more. That's my opinion. But I appreciate well, the fact that they're showing it. It's just for somebody who hasn't is, done it before, you need more information right there. Right. Well, the thing is, and Bernie could um, probably have more, uh, shed more light on this, but I have a feeling they did in other videos that actually were taken down off of YouTube because um, they had hundreds of videos where they had different demonstrations and tutorials like mm. this. This is like the one that people honestly, I guess, was the most popular and people just grabbed it and downloaded it and reposted it on their own channel. And that's how um, I, I, I'm, that's my theory on how a couple of their videos survived. But um, they might, yeah, maybe they had more detailed information elsewhere. I, but um, it's, we, we have the answer now. So, and um, basically what she's doing is she's uh, 
she's burning off the enamel so it makes it easier to sand because uh if you don't burn it off first you're going to sit there you know like for an hour trying to sand it off if you don't have oh. the proper you um, could buy a tool that goes over top of it which i need to buy i yeah. use a razor blade to scrape it off but even that doesn't get it all so you're better off with the burning it to be honest with right you, until you get that stripping tool and the thing is, I do recommend um, anybody trying this um, to use the burning method first before you grind it, just because grinding it puts a strain on the tips of the the, the leads. You know, you don't want to add micro fractures there and damage your lead. You know, you want to, you know, just grind it off enough to scrape that enamel, but you don't want to damage the wire. And when you're when you don't have a you know a method of burning it off fast and then grinding it, it's just it, you know you're going to sit there and grind it, and grind it, grind it you know, and, and break those tips. The wire. So it, you see how it flashes? There's a little yeah. flash. That's it, it, when I burn them, I wait for that flash and that's it. You know, I don't want to overburn it, but you know, when you, you just take it to it and you look for that flash of that, that's the enamel kind of like disintegrating, I guess. We are melting off the enamel. So when it's time to solder, it's easier to make the connections. Step 12. Now it's time to sand the ends and remove the burnt enamel. Man, that's pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, and it gets off pretty quick when you burn it. You gotta invest in one of those little dremels there, Ben. Take your alligator clip and connect. Oh, I have one. Any of I asked yours. you if you had one. You said no. Oh, oh, right maybe now, I didn't hear what you said. My bad. <laughs> wires. Well, yeah, cutting that PVC pipe would be a lot easier with a Dremel. So being that it may be yeah, no, I, I do have a Dremel. Finish. Yeah, we can use when that. This is the start. Take the finished wire and connect it to any other wire. So this is, uh, yeah, I'll grab it one second to, um, to show you. But uh, this is um, where we're hooking our two channels up in series. So what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, we're going to um, take one wire from one end and we're going to take another wire from the other end and we're going to test them with our multimeter until we find the one that is the same wire, essentially. And then when we find the same wire on both ends, we're going to take one end, uh, drop it, and then look for an any other wire and then connect it, right? So we're connecting two wires in series and we're keeping one in one hand and connecting you know, finding the lead and then connecting it. So we're going to be repeating that that process is so holding it's gotta it. Be the, it's got to be the same wire that loops around and then comes back to the other end. Okay, yes. So you're going to basically put your multimeter on conductivity and let it mm -hmm. beep. So that yes. when you touch the two ends together in the right, it'll beep and tell you hello. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that there's a method and then they don't really explain it too well, but that's that's the method here. We're holding it. Oh. And you're going to repeat this process. <laughs> It's a good thing that's dry. Um, we're going to be holding it in one hand and then looking for the lead in the other hand. So we're not no. really going to, yeah. So, and we're going to do that for two channels so now 12 that times. With channel A, this so that channel has um, 12 wires in series, and the, the two wires are not actually connected. So it's 11 wires um, connected, and then the last two are open as your uh, your leads um, to attach to a load or whatever. Gotcha. Makes it one wire. And I'm going to proceed to doing the same thing I did with these 11 connections on channel B. That sound is channel B completed. Now for step 14, we're going to solder 
all the connections. So the reason why I didn't solder my connections and I used tape instead is because I wanted to test and see if, uh, you know, asymmetrical coil would do anything, which it doesn't, um, or, or, you know, different configurations. But um, honestly, I do recommend testing, uh, like be, be careful, put some uh, tape on it, test it first to make sure it works and then solder the leads, you know, make sure it works and then you know you have it, it right and then solder the leads so, so you can make a, a good um, finish for the product. For step 15, get electrical tape and put it around the ends of the wire that was soldered to avoid the connections touching. Now that you have successfully finished wiring and connecting your POE Vortex coil, it is time for testing. Hmm. We're going to take channel A and connect it to the amplifier and channel B and connect it to the amplifier. Now for the last two wires that are remaining, they are going to be connected to the 192 LED panel. Oh. Yep. So this is, again, this is using the open circuit method. I'll grab the chart here in a second for everybody to see. Turn it on and voila. Thank you very much for your time. This is Erica Nunez with one. So this is the circuit that um, okay, they're hold using on, hold in this on, video. On. Sorry, give me one second. Let me, there you go, oh, go ahead. There we go. All right, awesome. So this is the circuit that they're using in this video. It's the Nunez method open circuit. And what they're doing is they're crisscrossing um, the ends of coil A and coil B. So as you can see, the input of coil A is uh, from the source, the tone gen, um, and the output goes to the positive of the load. But the uh, input of B is going to the negative of the load, and the um, output of B is going to the source. So it's like crisscross almost. It's 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 very and I don't know. It's it's not um, something you would traditionally be taught to hook up in that way, but it works. And I've proven that it works. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, let's put the next video on. Let's finish this coil. And, and Nathan, if you have anything for me to, you know, like if you have any videos or anything for us to discuss, feel free. This is, we'll consider this like an open mic. Oh, yeah. So Ben, how far you got it glued so far? You want to show us? Yeah. Let me put you back on the solo layout here and just want to see where you're at. So we have three, four, five, six, seven rings. Oh, seven small rings done. We need one, two, three, four to go. Hey, Ben, you got your magnet over there, the, the ball magnet. I want to see it in the center of that thing hey. just so we can take a look at the. Oh, the neodymium? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe with a little cup or something, we can kind of see where you're going to go with testing on it. That'd be really cool. I'm kind of excited. This thing's a lot bigger, so. So, yeah, there's a Neo. Here we go. Now put it right in the center of the coil. See if it fits. Yeah. Oh, we got we got plenty of room there. Plenty of room. Oh, yeah. That'd be if cool. If this thing doesn't... Yeah, if this thing doesn't synchronize, you know what? I have a feeling that this bigger uh, geometry might um, allow it to synchronize at lower uh, input levels. Well, yeah, because I want to see it right in the center of that thing. You weren't able to get it there before, but, you know, I've seen a lot of videos with it there in the center. So mm -hmm. that'd be pretty cool right there. Yeah, floating. Exactly. And we have more room to do that, too. Exactly. No, that's good. 
you know what? I think that coil is honestly a little bit too small to float this neodymium sphere because this is a thick baby. You know, this is a big baby boy. Um, but this, I think this is perfect. We'll be able to get this sucker to float. Or if it doesn't float, it's going to fly through my ceiling. <laughs> I'm going to lose my deposit. <laughs> or, or it'll just spin really fast. I mean, we'll, we'll, I want to see it. Definitely yeah, have to mark it. Be. Yeah, no, I, I think it's going to either spin real fast or it'll float. I, I think we'll get it to float. I have a feeling it'll levitate. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. Yeah, we'll have to find some tests for Ben to do that's not ordinary. You know what I mean? Kind of throw everything at the wall and see what sticks kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can't think of everything. You guys got to well, help me. <laughs> I'd like to see some iron ferrite in a jar of uh, water or electrolyte, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. There's a Dremel. Yeah. So, so, Ben, take some iron ferrite, right? So you can see where the mag magnetic flow goes. Put it in a, a solution of, like, electrolytes or something, and then spin it. And maybe put the uh, magnet on the bottom. Let's see how where they go. You know what I mean? If they come off the magnet, you know what I mean? Maybe put the mm -hmm. magnet in another container underneath. You know what I mean? Kind of play with it and see what it does because, you know, anything like a ferrofluid or anything that's magnetic, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. The ferrofluid is definitely something on my list. And I, the thing is, if you watch the uh, um, the conference, the Breakthrough Energy Movement conference uh, that the Nunez has put together, the presentation, I think it was like back in 2000. 14 or something but uh they specifically say uh because somebody asked them you know uh what happens if you put ferrofluid in the middle and daniel nunez said nothing happens to the ferrofluid but he didn't find a north pole we did in, in the coil that i have so e either maybe maybe the my theory is that the subtle um the subtle uh imperfections in my coil might be kind of uh, making a, the North Pole less pinched and, and more visible. Gotcha. Yeah, it might have some effect. I don't know. Well, you know what? Uh, wind the coil and braid it like Gerald does. Mm -hmm. So uh, he creates two coils, right? And then he like twists them and braids them. So what it'll give you is it'll give you two coil directions. And then when, when you run your electricity through it in the center, mm. it'll also change your rodent coil at that point, and it'll give you a true north and south easily for any mm. reason. You know what I mean? But that, right. that'd yeah, be really you want, cool. Yeah, the, the ideal uh, situation is to have full control over the north and uh, south pole, right? You know, you, you don't want to have a situation where you're trying to get the north pole and, and you can't get it, you know, or manipulate it. You want to be able to manipulate both of them, so... That's, yeah. that's my idea here because that would make it this in a really good all-in-one unit, you know, for, you know, different applications. I'm well, gonna, yeah. um, you know what? You should show the testing and the good and the bad and the ugly, you know what I mean? And see oh, what yeah. really, really these things do. Oh, that's why, yeah, and that's kind of like uh, what I've been trying to do. And, um, you know, you guys have seen it. You know, I've blown up capacitors. I blew up my stereo amp receiver on live. You know, like I'm trying to, you know, do – uh, more and more testing and trying to push it a little bit as safely as I can, you know, and that's, that's what a lot of people, um, they come in and they don't really understand is I want to make sure I have a safe environment to do some of these experiments you guys are suggesting. And it's not like I don't want to do them or I just can't, you know, I have them on my list. It's, it's a slow process. You know, I'm in a one bedroom apartment. I want to make sure I have all the, you know, I got my girlfriend here. I don't want to be in a situation where, you know, she's waking up to a, a fire or something, <laughs> you know, Oh, man. Well, I don't think you work with that high of electricity. Wait, no, wait. no. Yeah, I'd send your eyebrows. You come over to my garage. We, we'd be lighting <laughs> it up. We get, a, we get a tan. We get everything. You know what I mean? I'll light my cigarette with your Tesla coil. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. But uh, I'm going to take a quick bathroom break. Nathan, yeah, if you have anything you want to share or talk about, feel free. I'm going to, um, yeah, I'll be right back. Yeah, well, let's look it up, man. Let's uh, I'll go through my list here. Let's let's do a little high voltage while it's gone. We'll just blast it out. That's what I always do. Ooh, I might not leave now. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. 
Yeah, let me see. What do we got here? We got to have something good here. Oh, let's take a look at this one. I'll share this one. I do a lot of high voltage, guys. So let's see. Share it. There we go. When you want to let loose, it's time to just let it all hang out. So what do I do for fun here on this channel? Well, I light things up. That's what I like to do. Not with those here. They're fun. You can see the two half moons in there as, as it lights up. Just cool. That's only three. You got to lay down and install it to it. You fly. Anyway, that's it. So, yeah, it's just three AA batteries, and you get all that electricity out of it. That was really cool. Let's see. Do I set it on fire next? Yeah, I do. Okay, hold on. And then run a flyback spark right through it. The effect was really awesome. I like the fact that this thing started out really calm. And then it just hit. And then it hit again. And it just lit up the whole room, man. It looked cool. And it sounded just gnarly. Yeah. It's always fun, man. Always fun. Here's one I did. Let's see where we have it. Let's see if I light up a plasma bridge here for you. Oh. Here we go. Don't try this at home. And to ride the lightning. So you might ask how I set this. So the voltage is real thin. It doesn't have a whole lot of white in it. Perfect for making plasma that sprays out in that cool looking effect. I wouldn't recommend you do this at home unless you want to ride the lightning. So you might ask how I set this stuff up. These things are generally pretty simple. If you look at this and I'll show you a good picture of it. There's a positive and negative on it. All you have to do is line those up with your battery. I put these little ends on here. I'll show you a better picture of that. And it's a simple wrap around your DC coil here. Probably had a little more zap in it. Anyway, right here, the positive and negative. I've had these things where the amps are so high on this side, this little bracket here, it just burns right off. It unsolders itself. And then I had to solder directly to the board itself. So keep that in mind. Now on your negative, it's just the one that sparks the best. I'll show you a picture of that. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool when you do it. It's a little fun adventure just to have. Because maybe you just want to go out and spark something. I, I do that. As a matter of fact, I do it a lot. But anyway, I'll show this better for you. But this is the, one of the setups I use. This is... Uh, one of my voltage coils. So you're basically going to see this one with the, uh, you're going to see it with the battery right here. So that right there is what's going to create your pink plasma. All you need to do is get your uh, ZBS set up here with your flyback. Okay. And all you're going to do is you're going to put, uh, this is an aluminum ring. You can use steel. Okay. It wouldn't matter or copper. And then you're going to take a hole saw and your drill. And all you're going to do is you'll end up centering up the drill. Make sure you tape off the, the light here, okay? So you don't get that in the background because it makes a very bad image. Then you're gonna take your wire here. Mine's all kind of funky hooked up to this big old cord that comes across here. And all you're gonna do is you got your negative over here. This will be your positive. As you hit the drill, just place that on there as you're holding the drill. now. Pull the drill out before you stop it. 
because you'll get a little bit of a shock depending on how much your ZVS is going because there's a lot of static going on. Put that right there and make a ring of fire and uh, I'll show you how it looks. So what I want you to notice right here is you see that the power pack was hooked up earlier and it puts out a lot of amps. As you see in the plasma here, there's a lot of white and yes, it does go into pink, but all that white is the amps in the plasma. That's why this one works the way it does. Again, distance, we are probably about an inch, inch and a quarter on this one because we're not looking for that big giant plasma effect. We're looking for like amp and plasma effect. This one right here is the one I use to create most voltage projects. The actual flyback in here is a little different than the other one. So I'm getting a much thinner spark, which is exactly what you're looking for. The thick ones with a lot of white in them have way too many amps. So this is the one I would use the power pack on. Again, I'll show you a better picture of this. As you can see, there's no piece right here. Again, I had to solder it to the back because I overamped it with a different power source than I usually use. But this is the coil that I go to right here. Again, here's the power pack that I use here. And just as a quick understanding, I'll show you this a little better. Oh, anytime you use one of these right here, just remember this right here with the shielding on it of the plastic is your positive. Anything right here with just the metal, it forms around the whole thing. You got to pull it to one side. I solder mine off. That's your negative. One of my favorite things to do with plasma is to connect it with these items here. Now, this is just a solid piece of aluminum all the way through. These right here are just saw blades. They were once one blade, pretty big, just like that, used for cutting tree limbs and stuff. Anyway, what you do is you connect the positive here or the negative. doesn't really matter. They're both positive. So... Just hook the one you think is positive here, the one you think is negative here. Right about here, you're about an inch and a half off. That's about exactly where you need to be. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but that's where you need to be. And that'll create that nice plasma bridge you see right in between it. Now, you want to get a little more advanced. You take this and this, and you set it up in this configuration here. Now, what are you doing? This has to be connected to this one. So these two are connected on the same line. This is connected on the opposite. So if you said these two were negative, this would be the positive wire. Again, distance is important. Now, you may think, well, you're using two, so we're, you need to bring in the distance a little bit. And the answer is no, not at this level. Just right here. This is exactly what you need. So that'll get you this nice plasma look here. One thing to remember is the sound you want to hear. When you hit that sound, you know you're at the correct distance. Maybe you want to do it in saw blades. The key here is metal, no paint. This is a used saw blade, plenty of metal on the ends here. So what do you want to do? Same thing. If you connect it with this right here and straight, you're only going to get the one where the distant, distance matches right here. So obviously that's just this. What do you have to do? You have to bend this around the curve to match the saw blade. Now, can you use two saw blades sitting on top of each other? The answer is yes. And all you have to do is you line up the two saw blades here. Again, two. Line them up. Again, put this piece over here, and it'll give you the same plasma look. Everything's about a big size and a small size. No matter how you do it, one has to have more mass and metal. That's the key here. And no paint. If you use something that has paint, it's not going to give you that same plasma look you're looking for. It'll actually maybe just spark over once or twice if you're lucky. Or it might just do nothing. The key is no paint. has to be bare metal. 
That's how you do it. This is what the stall blades look like when you connect it to the rod now. And you can see on here, I bent the rod. And I just want you to look at each one of the little ends of the saw blade here, the little points. They actually make the plasma come right off of it. And that's what you're looking for. A couple of things here. If I just wanted to use a hole saw and a ring, could I do it? Sharp edges, again, metal. Everything depends on distance. As you can see here, the aluminum ring is about an inch and three quarters or so away from the bottom hole saw blade. I didn't show the connections in this one, but obviously the ring is positive and on the bottom, the hole saw blade is negative. From the side, this just looks like a bowl. From the top, it kind of looks like a vortex. Just to show you, you can use just about anything for one of these projects. This right here is my big speed square. This right here is the same saw blade you saw earlier. Now, I can put this on this side right here and create plasma in between it. Why? Because this has more metal in it than this. And again, sharp edges and no paint. This right here makes this effect right here look cool just like this. Wow, that's, that's awesome. This right here is a pretty cool effect. What's going on? I have positive on one side, negative on the other, and all I'm doing is converting small to big, and it's sending ion wind down to the other plate. Now, if I pulled it back just a bit, it would just create charge on the disc. This way it converts it over. Just so you're aware, every time it sparks over, it loses charge on the plates and it has to start over. I just wanted to show you guys this build real quick. This is a... Hey, Ben, you're back. Oh, now you're gone again. Okay. Hello? Oh, <laughs> yes. What's up? I had to go spark one. <laughs> no, that's fine. I just I wanted to check on you when you came back before I played anymore. We good no, to no, play it, or good. you got something to show? No, I don't. I don't have anything to show right now. You can continue. I might uh, find uh, another video in a minute, but uh, yeah, this is good. I like it. Thousand watt ZBS. This is a DC flyback transformer, and this is a second DC flyback transformer. As you can see, we have seven wraps on this, and seven on this one. Now, the one that goes over top, I put it on this left one here. Output B. The one that goes. Under it goes to output A, which is on this side, okay? And this right here connects here, and it connects here. This top one here connects here and here. This is run really simple. The hot wire that comes out the red one right there, it connects over here to the ground that goes into this one. Then we have the hot wire that comes out here, okay? And then that one goes right here to the ground, and they spark across here. Now, let's go ahead and take a look real quick. This right here is the schematic for it. And as you can see, we have a power pack on this one, 19 volts, 2.37 amps, goes to a ZBS. Pretty simple, plus and minus are shown. All right, guys, let's just skip to the good part. Right, now we turn off the light. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Look at the end. You can already see them lighting up right there. Let's bring it a little closer. And yes, I do have fireworks going on behind me on that one. See it coming together? That's the key. Right there. That's what I want. See that? A purple? Perfect. That's why you build them in, in like this. Put two of them together because you want that right there. And yeah, I do need to replace that uh, <laughs> that transformer. It's uh, it's bad, but you can see the spark get closer. It sparks out a little further to get the eye on wind. Exactly what we're looking for is a perfect setup for that. All right, let me 
turn this off without trying to zap the living daylights out of myself. All right. So you can get a look at what we're doing here. Here's our negative. Anywhere on the bottom here, they're all connected all together on the bottom. All the wires are connected into one. So you can just hit one on the negative there. And then let's go ahead and see if we can't move some stuff out of the way. I'm just going to set this right here and get this wire out of our way. Okay. There we go. Let's just make sure the circuit works. And then we'll turn off the lights again. There we go. I can hear it. All right. I'm going to go turn off the lights real quick. And you can see it. There we go. You can see it right in there now. Look at that. Now this one's kind of beat up. I've been using it a lot. You can see every point where there's a sharp point, it breaks out. So there's ion wind coming off of it right now. So this is what that circuit could do. And I got a busted transformer that's starting to burn out on me and it's still producing this. So it's a pretty good circuit if you want to run it. I have the STLs for this right here or the uh, 3D printed files where you can make your own online. I'll go ahead and do, put the link in the description for you. But I just wanted to show you this. It's a pretty cool setup and it makes some pretty awesome ion wind. I want to show you guys this. Look, see the top of the thruster at night. You see all those little uh, lights? Or like, I, I don't know what to call them. Everywhere that you see them is where my razor blade went over the uh, magnet wire to make it bare. So you can see just the, the total amount of uh, ions that are pulling from there only. The rest of the magnet wire doesn't do anything. It's just this little bunch, okay? So if I probably add more, Okay, I can get a little bit more, but it doesn't add in the amount that it comes out, right? So we're getting, what, a 2.3 ms out of a regular thruster. But by adding a second wire, and you can see it in there right there, so it's 2 right there, and then it goes down to one bar in the middle. It did add volume to the total amount of air coming out. So we added more air coming out, okay, which will eventually give us more thrust, but, okay, we didn't change the amount coming out. So I hope you understand that. Just give you a better look. Make a really nice light show if you're watching it. You can see just the total cloud there now. It used to be real thin. I didn't show it the other one at night, but, uh, Anyway, it comes up real nice. Just thought it'd be cool to show you that. It's a really, really neat thing to see at night. Yeah, but by the way, guys, I got those STLs around Thingiverse. If you just look it up, uh, so it should say ion thruster or plasma thruster or something like that. But uh, yeah, you could build it yourself at home. Just take that flyback like I showed earlier. I used two in series, get that sucker real thin. Test it out just the way I did, man. It comes out beautiful. Just make sure you have ventilation. So if you run it for like two or three minutes, make sure you open up your garage and ventilate it. Never run it in your house. Um, always you have to have it dark so that you can see it. But, uh, you know, a little exhaust fan or something like that would be awesome. Hey, Ben, where are you at with your coil? Yeah, you got a couple more so, in? Just one more to go, and that's all we have left for the coil frame, my friends. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the end of the stretch here. <laughs> coil frame, at least. <laughs> right on. Um, how, long, how long did it take for all that to dry, Ben, before you start working with it? Um, I it, the, the bottle 
or uh, the, uh, the bottle. The glue recommends six hours, but I recommend a full 24 hours. Just okay. be sure. Yeah, just yeah, I, there might be differences in, in moisture content in your atmosphere, you know, and that might uh, differentiate the cure time. And I don't know. I just like to be safe. Always safe than sorry. Hmm. So I give it 24 hours. But, you know, we're, we're going to give it more than that, obviously, because we're not going to be ready for at least another week or so depending on when I get the wire. Right on. I do have a smaller spool so we can kind of see what it will look like, you know. Well, make sure when you do the rope, you tape it and uh, put it up on video so that we can see it. So mm -hmm. that, uh, you, you know, we take Ian's theory and put it together and show it, show it what it looks like. Actually, I can do that on this live stream because what I'm going to do is not rope. I'm just going to, uh, I'll do it with the wire. I have the same wire. I just have a smaller spool. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'll measure it with that and we'll just, you know, take that and times it by 24, right? That yeah. should give us our answer. Well, even better. Let's see it. You know what I mean? When yeah, you, obviously, when you're done and you can maneuver it, obviously. Yeah, and that, that'll be a good, no, this, this is good because then I get the opportunity to show you guys, you know, uh, uh, before our class, so you're ready how to actually wind it, you know, and then yeah. we'll do one wind with it. It'll be real easy. Huh. I, I promise everybody it'll be easy and painless. <laughs> huh. But yeah, we'll, we'll give this um, a few minutes to set. Yeah. Cause uh, it should be fine. I'm not, I'm just going to be really delicate with it. That's all. Well, well, do what you're comfortable with. I'd hate to see you ruin your project. So if, no, I mean, worst case ahead. scenario, I just have to glue it over again. So, by the way, well, I, just so you guys know, if it's metal and it's in my garage, it's not safe. It's going to get high voltage through it. <laughs> yeah, and your hair might stand up. <laughs> oh. Well, you see, dude, I use my speed square. Whatever comes to mind, whatever saw blades laying around, you better watch twice because I'm going to take it and use it, and I'm going to put it in my experiment and see what it does. So, yeah. Dude, if I cut up to pay. Don't go into his uh, workshop. It'll be. Whoop. <laughs> I, I cut up three saw blades that were for my table saw over here, and I used those in that axe I was doing. Man, it was just amazing. Both sides lit up on it. You know what I mean with plasma, and then the center went like this. Okay, so I had another plasma thing going up just like that. I did a Jacob's ladder out of the top, and I had a big skull on the front. Man, that thing was cool. So. Yeah, they wouldn't let me go out and LARP with that, that's for sure. The, uh, sending me home. Old man's over there trying to burn everything down or sit there with some plasma. Yeah. Huh. Hey, Sean, what's up, man? We were just building some plasma. My, uh, Ben's over here putting his coil together. So he's putting the last winding in now. I'll go ahead. I'm going to play a little more plasma there for you, Ben, while you're doing that. Yeah, yeah. Sounds zen to me. Well, meter Sorry. per second is about what I got. And on this one, okay, it's not, it's not hooked up in double form. It's just a single one blowing at this time. And as you can see right here, turn on one last time, 2.4. It jumps up to 2.9, but it's more of an anomaly than the 2.4 consistently coming out of it. But once in a while, it gets there. Here are some high voltage experiments that I did. Here's the first one, voltage walking. Tell you, no stall safe. Oh, Not even like my dancing. wires are safe, man. I'm gonna set them on fire. What? It's like dancing. Yeah. Like a little running man. Here's the second experiment. I call it pins and needles. Hey, don't walk into the garage, everybody. He's sparking one up. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it only goes to one at a time. It never goes to all of them. I was kind of hoping for all of them really? to hit it once, but they, they wouldn't do it. Maybe if you have multiple... This uh, is the third pins. experiment. We've all seen well, they're all connected on a round together. magnet. This is what it looks like on a rotating magnet. Oh, 
you definitely need to get a slow mo camera for this, Nathan. <laughs> no, I'm serious. That would be. Oh my god. That I think magnet is I'm sure here. wondering. Yes, I did demagnetize <laughs> those magnets, putting them in the high voltage field. <laughs> those went in the trash. I, I well, think if we're you want to find flybacks and you don't know where to look, details. this is a CRT TV or otherwise known as a tube Did TV. And yes, there's a flyback in here. But the question is, do we have to rip it out or can we just use it as is? Really? Cool. This is a spark gap for a CRT TV or basically a tubed TV. It's a 27 inch TV. The positive gets connected to the flyback transformer. The negative gets attached to the strap on the TV. It also has a connection to the motherboard, which I'll show you later. So that strap is a Yes, I do have to clean it. That's probably just all the garbage on there smoking off. <laughs> no, it was something else smoking. <laughs> the spark cap on That's this gets so pretty cool. big, but that. you have to start it real small. Hold As on, you can see, we're about one there, inch away when we second. start. We get up to about uh, three and three quarter that's, inches on this. That's, I'm sorry. That's, that's that? no, no. no I, was, I was gonna say, go back for a second on that spark gap. That that doesn't look like a normal st spark gap, does it? Oh, it look cool, doesn't like it? The, at least the the plasma discharge doesn't look normal. Like it looks like it's. Have you ever have you ever seen the the Harry Potter scene where they they collide their wands and it looks like one's pushing against the other? That's what that looks like. Let me find it. Yeah, it's like right uh, right after that part. Okay, we'll hit play. The flyback in here. Yeah. But the question is, do we have to rip it out, or can we just use it as is? This is a spark right app there. for a Look. CRT TV, or it basically like a tube the other side. TV. It's a 20. Yeah, that looks really cool. That is insane. Wow. Yeah, da no, all, all voltage dances a little bit with these. I don't know. Maybe I'm just seeing things, but it, it I don't know. It looks different. It's cool. It's, it's really good work. I love it. Oh, look at that. Jacob's ladder. Oh, it's all twisted up like DNA. Yeah. Like it should be like, it's going to travel that way probably or, or more, more naturally that way. I think if you twist it more, I, you might be able to get it looks like it I don't know like it I love how it rides up man this is a a bit longer I shortened it uh that thing a little bit to do it I did it again but there you go oh wow ah that that's cool yeah simple stuff you... the the old man Bill does in his garage when nobody's looking I'll tell you nothing safe. If it's metal, I'm lighting it up. We're gonna put put one of those. Uh, make like a um, make like a an artistic piece out of it to put it behind you and on camera. You know, like put like a, a little glass display around it. You know, just have it sparking in the background while you're on camera. That be that be sweet. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what else we got on here. I, man, I got some more stuff. I probably lit up. Oh, this next one's cool. We're going to listen for some sound. I'll turn it back up. Thanks. Yeah. So I just have a coil here, and I want to put a spark cap through it. And Well, let's just see what it sounds like. So originally, I was going to build this thing as an atmosphere motor. And, well, I failed. So I decided to just... Okay, hold on. With this one, you ever want to see the stages of plasma, okay? And you want to know where it goes from. I'll just tell you the backstory real quick, okay? I was trying to build a uh, Corona motor. And I didn't listen to everybody else and, you know, smooth the edges, stuff like that. And I, I put it in the wrong direction. Total nightmare, right? Totally messed it up. My fault. Okay, but when the thing starts burning the plastic, you'll start seeing it'll go from purple where you get the eye on, you know what I mean? Then it'll start going into different colors as it starts getting hot. 
you'll start to see the white and the yellow, and it'll light it up. Okay, so I'll just restart it real quick and let you watch it. That means if we actually build a lightsaber, Nathan, the yellow is going to be the strongest. The yellow and the white. Yeah. Oh, I got excited. I almost, I almost trashed my frame here. I got so excited about that. So originally, <laughs> I was going to build this thing as an atmosphere motor. And, well, I failed. So I decided to just hit it with a lot of high voltage and see what it looked like. And, well, you could see that it pretty much is starting on fire. Yeah, that was fun. You know, you just can't win them all. No, I, I don't think I ever win them all with this stuff. Most people see this experiment as a can being moved by static electricity. But did you know high voltage can do the exact same thing? Here is the static electricity experiment. It just works on a simple right, principle. So, my bad. Take the cloth, rub the rod, and it'll move the can. Static electricity does the rest. Now let's use some high voltage, and let's see if we can't get the can to move again. Hold on, Ben. Let me just rewind it a little bit. Static electricity does the rest. So you see static electricity doing it, now right? Now let's use some high voltage, and let's see if we can't get the can to move again. As you can see, both effects have worked. Why? Because we're polarizing the can. Oh. As you can see here, I sanded the can down. Why? Because it reacts better to the high voltage when it has metal to metal. Just to show you that the high voltage is actually on and it's working well, let's go ahead and turn off the lights and see if we can't get a little plasma now that the can is sanded a little bit. I can't immediately move, by the way. Now, is it an attraction or a repulsion force that's happening? As you can see, the high voltage works just fine. So, good thing you asked. When you polarize the can with a PVC pipe, it's mm -hmm. uh, attraction. When I do it with the high voltage, it's repulsion. So, it's okay, uh, okay. more of a more of an eddy current in it that, that forces it away because of the uh, mag magnetism. So that's it. Play. Fine. We get a great plasma out of it. And yes, I do need some new wires. They uh, have cut open with the high voltage experiments and they seem to blast plasma everywhere. I'll tell you what, though, it does make a cool look with that wire being messed up. It actually shows you just a stream of plasma coming off that thing. Of course, the wires are busted. <laughs> For those of you who are doing high voltage experiments, you should really understand this simple fact. When you thin out the voltage and remove the amps, it acts just like static electricity and it polarizes things. In this experiment, we just use a simple can, whether it be from static electricity or from the high voltage. Well, let's go forward a bit. As we put in these last I'll show you how to AC build a high voltage flyback. multiplier. You can see it goes over with an AC flyback in it. Let's see what it does. So we got it connected. This thing on, let's see what we can do. Ooh, hey. Hey. That is a nice lightning arc. Yeah. It looks like lightning. Wow. 
Like every as you kind can of see, different we all work. Arc it looks, looks good. Different. I like things a beast, isn't it? Yeah, that was I just like one the way it... multiplier. I I got two set up. I'm gonna try here in the next couple of days. Like so I, I know got... some some people prefer the the purple, and the purple looks nice. Don't get me wrong, but that clean like blue crisp lightning effect. Ooh, I love it. Go spark one up right now. Yeah, watch this. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Hey, hey, we're 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 inventing a new way to to uh, make your popcorn, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> a, a cooler way, but a more dangerous way. So don't try it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, this stuff's so cool. I do it at night, and you know what I mean. You can see the lightning during the day, but this part, you know what I mean, with the purple lights right. up, like that. You can see, yeah, you can see like the fog of it, the fog of the purple too. The discharge, what is that considered? Like I know there's the, the discharge, which is like the kind of like the arcs and then the but, fog. Yeah, it's like an ion. Uh, like a gas, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not, not so much a gas, still a voltage, but you're getting there. But it is doing something to the the atmosphere, like, and you could see, like, it's a gaseous. Yeah, it's like almost like a force field. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Huh? So, it, just so you know, if you hold it off a little bit more, it'll start charging things up. When it doesn't create the uh, the plasma look, and you keep it a mm -hmm. little further away, you start putting a charge on things. Okay, so you, if you're ever wondering. When you want to make charge and, and you put it on a plate here and a plate here and a pole in the center and you put paper in there like a little paper UFO, it'll create a heavy static charge based on the distance. You put it closer, you're going to get the plasma breakout. You put it further away, you're going to get a static charge and it just creates a massive amount of charge on it. Right, because there's uh, less space for the plasma to, to arc like that. Because you're not wasting it. You're not using it. Right here, as soon as it right, starts, you be close. you're using it. And the other yeah. way, it just builds it builds up and builds up. No, that makes sense. It's sparking, it's discharging, it's wasting energy. And you can visually see it in the form of that light, the, the lightning effect. It's really cool. Yeah, you wonder, wonder why. We'll talk about the, the, the static electricity on the UFO thing. Well, I've had plenty of experience in knowing what it's not. You know what I mean? Then I've plenty right. of experience in knowing what it was and using it. And that's so cool that we can actually, like most people are actually, you know, trying to build... Uh, these systems or, or trying to build cool systems that are uh, practical and aiming for the lightning effect. But that's the opposite of what you want, you know, that you want to minimize that in order to increase the um, the efficiency of it. But by the way, Sean, nothing's grounded. Th this is just straight positive and negative out of the coil. The top plate was actually built like a capacitor at one time. So it's got uh, like four different plates in there. And on each plate, there's a piece of... Uh, Aluminum foil on each one, and they're stacked. So you get a little bit of extra coming out of it. Oh, you know what? I have my microphone backwards. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> That's probably better. <laughs> yeah, I have too much fun in my garage. That's for sure. Hey, it looks like a lot of fun. I would probably have a lot of fun in your garage, too. Probably <laughs> too much fun. Probably get myself into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see what else I don't know what else I blew, I blew up on this one. Oh they had sounds on this one too if you want to hear it let's see alien sound again oh I hear that screeching Beautiful plasma arrays are easy oh, to wow. build, but how do you get this effect and avoid this effect? Yeah, just sparking over like crazy. And then what's going on during the day when you can't see it? Is it still doing the same thing? Yeah, it is, but you just can't see it because it's not nighttime. Let's take a look at how it's done. The first thing we need to do is just set this thing up. 
So what we're looking for is a saw blade to be equal distance from whatever object we put in the center. In this case, it was just a di double helix project I had left over. So what I did is set them equal distance apart. They're about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half away from the double helix. And what it does when you move it too close, it starts to spark. When it stays far enough away, it hisses. And then if it's too far away, it won't do anything. Once you have the hiss, turn off the lights and you'll get this. Let's take a look at this other project. I built a coil around a uh, all thread and I was trying to get it to spark around in a circle all the way up. The voltage doesn't work that way. I went ahead oh, and changed the coils just down to one coil so that you can see what it actually was doing. On this one, I just offset the coil a little bit, so it'll go high and low. Here's the power source. Here's the battery right here I used for my drill. This is a 1000 watt ZVS and an AC flyback. And this is my voltage multiplier circuit. The negative of the voltage multiplier circuit goes to the all thread. I put it underneath so that it doesn't come in contact with the positive. The positive goes over to the ring itself. Once you connect all those, it's time to light it up. If you're wondering how I built the voltage multiplier or the circuit itself that you just saw, I will add a video to the end of this one and you can go ahead and watch it and I do the complete build on it. I wanted to show you two more things here with this coil that I thought were really cool. This one here, when you put the voltage into it, you see it sparking over. You can also see the, the lights coming out today. Uh, it's no longer nighttime. So you can see just barely some plasma in there. Uh, but the coil does move uh, as you turn it on because it wants to roll towards the saw blade. You're probably wondering the other experiments with the coil. If you get something down the center, can you get it to light up? Well, yeah, I could. Unfortunately, the lighting outside just got a little lighter and uh, it changed the effect, but it looks cool. As you could probably tell with a lot of high voltage projects I do, I use these saw blades because they are just awesome for putting out plasma. So I wired these all together. See if I can't get them all to spark oh, at no. once. I saw a guy on the internet put these between his legs and fired them all off. I'm going to give it a shot myself. So I got these two batteries here hooked up and I'll just show you what it does. Yeah, that between your legs. All right, it's gonna be fun. I couldn't stop laughing the whole time Remember I was doing when your it. mom told you not to do stupid things. Yeah, this is one of them. I have no idea, but I was laughing the entire <laughs> time, dude. I had to on. You would think I'd be like worried, but I was just laughing, dude. I couldn't stop. Anyway, that's it. All right, Ben, what do you got? The old man right there. All right. All right. So, this is the exact Hold on. wire that we're going to be using. It's a 24-gauge uh, magnetic enameled wire, and it's a brilliant red that's going to match very well with this vibrant orange that you printed, Nathan. Nice. And thus, I will... Uh, Name this prototype the Fireball. Huh. Right on. You heard it here, folks. Uh, first, this is the Fireball. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you want to try that. 
That that may not uh, work out for you. I I got lucky, man. It didn't drop those things when I was laughing. That they were. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, you're yeah. right. Let's let's go put this somewhere else where I don't accidentally knock it over again. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Set this to the side. Tempted fate. Yeah, that's me. Oh, not, nothing's like doing some high voltage with old man builds. Let's. Oh. Yeah, that's always fun, man. Lighting up plasma. Now, Ch Sean's over there helping me with my testicle, and I'm lighting it up that way. You just wait until what comes next, man. I'm going to set probably three of these together so they point at each other with that testicle. I will see if I can't create a singularity in the middle. So if you start seeing me with testicle lighting videos, you better watch out because I'm going to be really lighting it up. We'll have to mm -hmm. buy some more, some more parts over here. Get it all done. So that'd be pretty cool, man. Yeah, big fireball. Well, maybe. <laughs> you know, if, if there's wood in the middle, it's starting on fire. That's for sure. So I, I, I learned my lesson with wood next to it. That kind of, <laughs> kind of get you going. Yeah. So uh, I set it down on a six by twelve uh, cylinder sample. We get rid of them a lot. A lot of those at work. So um, I took the nice ones and I use them as displays. You know, they're nice stands. They're concrete. You know, keeps things a little cooler. So. I like them. Right on, yeah. And uh, also, um, when I ship my coil, do you want me to ship you a small cylinder, a stand, or do you think you have something that you can? You know what? On? Just show me how to wind it, Ben, and I'll, I'll wind it. That's all you gotta do. Yeah, I, dude, I got like bunches of wire here. Like, oh, I well, got then, big, uh, perfect. big, big rolls yeah. of wire here. Yeah, because oh, uh, I've been building Tesla coils and stuff. You know what I mean? So five pound yeah. spools is what I've been buying. And, as long as you uh, follow the instructions in my class, you'll be good. Yeah, yeah, just take your time with it. That's all. And, you know, even because sometimes it does take a long time when you're first starting out building these things. It's OK to set it, you know, when you're in mid wind, set it down somewhere where you're not going to it's not going to be bothered, you know, and you're not going to disturb the wire, you know, and continue it, uh, you know, take it periodically, you know, take it one step at a time. Yeah, no, I can't do that. My mind doesn't work that way. If I, if I don't loop it right at that time, I'm going to lose mm. where I am. So. No, no, that's, that's, that's good. You know, that I'm, I'm the same way, but you know, just for some people, you know, just, just so they understand it's okay to, you know, set it aside. If you have to just make sure the wire isn't disturbed and you're not bending the wire unnecessarily. The only bends you want to try to put into it are uh, on the spool uh, um, to wind it and the spool and then to wind it on the, the frame. That's I, it. I think I'm going to mod your design. The one that you had me print on the corners. Mm. I don't, I don't like that sharp corner that goes where mm. the wire goes. I want yeah. to round that out. So well, yeah, right. Um, you got this. I got the spare here. Um, yeah, right here. I don't like the sharp corners either. Yeah, round that out. That would be nice. I mean, it's good that it hook. It's kind of hooks it in and traps it in. But you, if you have a zip tie, you don't need that there. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's what I do. Yeah, that's what I think uh, I'm going to do. I'm going to round those out because that that looks like a mess when you go to put the wire in. Yeah, it is. No, it is. And honestly, that's uh, I did catch the bundle on on mine a couple of times. You got to be careful; it'll scratch it or, or uh, release it from that tight bind, and uh, that could mess with the the field geometry in un unpredictable ways. So um, that's all stuff to consider. Also, if you look here at these openings, Nathan, if we can try to make these round ones just a V, just a tiny V shape. That's all we need to do to alter this uh, to make it like a, a advanced 3.0 where we just set the wires down on top of one each other. One, you know. Or you wanted a rectangle. A ranked? I'm sorry, you said what? You want that round hole to be a rectangle or a V? A V. So it, it only space for one wire, but on top of each other. So you don't okay. have a bundle. Yeah, so... Um, maybe I could pull up the, the they're trying to pull here. off Who another effect. It? Okay. I'm just trying to figure it out. Yeah. 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 But I, um, now that I'm thinking about it, I, I don't think it would be that hard to alter one of these, um, designs to do that. Let me pull up the picture here. Hey, watch this. You create the singularity. Uh, if you suddenly disappear, we know what happened to you. Yeah. You get sucked into the singularity. Huh. <laughs> Hey, if, oh. if that happens, if that happens, you uh you have to take my coils and, and give them a safe home. 
Hey Ben, what what size you were using? Twenty four gauge or twenty three? Uh, twenty four. But you can use um, you can use different gauges for different things. Like uh, I uh, they uh, the Nunezes recommend I think eighteen to sixteen gauge wire at least for uh, anything practical and energy generation. Like if you're using it as like a generator to power like a big load. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got a bunch of twenty gauge left over from a, a generator I built. So. I'll, I'll so this that. is, yeah, this is, uh, and this coil frame is a lot smaller, obviously, but look, it's, it's just, it's got a lot more notches. I think, I, um, that's a single wire size, the opening. Yes. That's, that's what I mean by a small V shape opening. So it, it can layer them on top of one another symmetrically and evenly, but it's not enough for a whole bundle. Yeah, and I want to try to, it doesn't look, v, it looks rectangle. Mm, yeah well yeah that, maybe i got it wrong but still like the idea is uh just to give it enough room for one one um wire okay, that's a beautiful coil though that, yeah that i want to really try nice. to i want to try to build one of these too but i have to get the frame you know and i haven't been able to find a frame like that we have to custom make it hmm. i'll see if they got an sdl out there i'll have to run it super slow some of those hmm. things you know, yeah, you can run them real fast, and then some of these parts like this, you have to really fine tune them and run them slow. Yeah, so. yeah, and it's and with VBM, it's all about the spacing, really. So, um, well, that's that's something for a future day. You know, that's a more advanced project than what we're working on right now. This is more along the lines of what we'll be doing. Oh, that's cool. I, I didn't see the clear, clear uh, the acrylic right away. <laughs> I just thought he had it out there in space. That looks cool. <laughs> but uh, e even this coil, see, it's it's not tightly bound, but it's still together enough to com uh, compile the, the field geometries of each individual wire on top of one another. You know, they're close enough so that they have some kind of uh, accumulative effect. You know what I mean? Whereas if you have them just without the the bundle and they're just in the spacing here uh, willy-nilly like you see a lot of coils, I don't know if that's enough to actually do what we're trying to do here. So, you know? Ben, let me let me ask you. When they cross over each other, do you, would it help or not help to have any kind of, uh, I don't know, divider in there, like a piece of plastic or something to give it space in between the coil? Is that a bad thing or a good thing? So... Actually, you don't. That's a good question, but you, you don't actually um, have to worry about spacing with the second one as long as you use the zip ties, and as long as you use the zip ties. No, um, that's not what I meant. I meant, would it be beneficial or change the outcome if you gapped them in between the coils? So you would go from uh, two overlapping wires, okay, two bundles that are overlapping, like this, mm -hmm. and then you put a spacer in between. So then you would have space. You know what I mean? With plastic in uh, instead of... I mean, the only difference I think it would make is uh, it would make it a little longer to wind, but um, it might help uh, re retain the, the shape a little bit. And and yes, maybe separating those two might I have some I guess I'm wondering, too. will it give you a capacitor effect? Can, can you get yeah, a I don't capacitance know. out of it? By, by putting a, a dielectric in the middle of it. It's kind of what I'm looking Oh, uh, that's... Yeah, that's an interesting way of looking at it. No, um, I don't know. I'd say it's worth trying, definitely. You know, it just for that, you know, I'd say it's worth trying. Um, but if in terms of trying to maintain the shape and all that, it's probably an extra step that you don't need to take. But right. um, well, I know that. Yeah, Please. but yeah, no, that's that's really cool idea. I didn't think about it that that way. Create any kind it of frame is. you want. Send your description, and I'll email it to you. Send me the SL right on. Nice. Yeah, yeah I'm a, thank I'm a, you. I I I do a good job on Fusion 360 myself, man. <laughs> I'm not too shabby at it. You have to be once you start playing with this stuff. Mm. So this is similar to the Advanced 3.0, but it's only see it's got fewer notches. It's the yeah. same kind of. But yeah, so it, 
it's a, a lower fractal of the um, geometry, but it's still maintaining that that spacing. So um, I'm not sure which kind of effect this has, what, what it's good for. I can imagine it's probably good for um, uh, maybe magnetic field generation. I'm not sure. You know, e every geometry has its own story. So you yeah. just got to remember that. I think until you test it, you really don't know, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. You get your hands dirty. <laughs> Yeah, they got some interesting designs here. This is the small one that um see how oh. small it is? That I I couldn't do that. That that I'd pay somebody to do. No, thank you. No, I, we're I'm going to do it, but no. it's going to take some Yeah, it's going to take some time to do this one. This one's going to be very very hard to do. Oh. It, it'll probably be a long process, but we're going to eventually try cuz I want to try to build all these different designs. They're they're so cool and you know, like we said, they they have different effects. They're used for different things. That's just a showpiece, man, right there. You put that on your wall. Oh, it's, I up. know. It's so nice. You put it on a... Yeah. I like that one. And then this is another one. These ones, um, I believe, are good for uh, spinning a magnetic rotary. Oh, that'd be How cool. How it doesn't have the... Yeah. Well, so look it into that coil the, frame on that one. That one looks cool. Yeah, I think... Um, I don't know. It, this might be one of the, the donuts with the grooves in it. I'm not sure. Hmm. Uh, but it doesn't have the... And notice it doesn't have the interference pattern. And uh, if we look at this video here, these ones are the same. They don't have the interference pattern. And they're used to... They're being tested to drive these large um, spinning rotaries. So... And then this... Well, this, this one has the interference pattern too, but... It seems like maybe these would be better for generating the the effect of rotating that motor. I'm not sure, hmm. but that's that's kind of what I inferred from it. But yeah, this is they had a facility where they were just testing these, you know, and, and testing how long they would run and, and how efficient they would run and how 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 big of a load they would put on them and wow. and all sorts of stuff. I never yeah. knew that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they actually, before they went silent, they had uh, uh, obtained a lease in New York for a property where they were intended to expand all these experiments that they actually, so they actually would have like a big place, you know, like a workshop to do all this stuff. Hmm. Yeah, Sean's over there building more testicles, man. So this is cool right here. Look at this. It says, tonight we are spinning a six pole magnet rotor using a PoE vortex coil at Dance 3.0. Driven using 1.95 watts total. <laughs> Next housing will have to be really uh, more more rid, uh, rigid. I think he meant rigid. But as you'll see in a second, it it does need a better housing because this thing is insane. Watch this. See it vibrating. Hmm. So it goes really, really fast on a you know a relatively low amount of power um, compared to you know other systems that we've seen. This is another example of it. Like when you do this stuff, I would highly recommend wearing uh, PPE, safety glasses, and even a hard hat if you have one. I guess I will have to invest. Hmm. <laughs> I do not. You can get a hard hat on. I do not you currently on own them. those items. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, you can get them on Amazon, but uh, yeah, it's just just to be safe. Because, I mean, like I said, if if the geometry is off, or you know, it could be unpredictable. Maybe, it, or, or if the frequency is is not in the range that it's supposed to be, who knows? It might fly up. I don't know. Now, by the way, say. just just be. Careful. I just uh, where was it? Right here. 
Mm -hmm. I just subscribed to Joel's channel because uh, I wanted to see what that peg sale was all about. And so, yeah, that was pretty cool. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, while I have a stream going today, um, also, I want to go over this uh, device. I don't know if it's the PEG device, or, but it's it's this basically a, a, a system of PVC piping. And based on this system of PVC piping, it does it creates like a um, a swirling vortex that creates um, a supposedly creates a, like a buildup of pressure, and it can just like you get it going, and it just sucks up water and keeps on sucking it up without oh. any input. And it's very it's very the design looks very simple. And uh, Bob Greenier was going over on a live stream, and it's something that I thought, you know, like, hey, that that wouldn't be that difficult to try to whip up and test and see if it actually works. It, you know? Is it a coil and it's pumping wire? No, no, it's just PVC piping. Here, I'll, I'll play the video in a minute. Okay, yeah, well, hold I'll, on. When I find you, the video, you do, you do know you can create a vacuum in, in piping or a hose, and it'll it'll suck everything out, right? Well, the idea is that it's you get it going, and it just doesn't stop. Like a continuously. Well, I, un out. I understand. Yeah. I drained my my buddy's pool with that. I just took a hose. I created a pressure in the hose, and mm. then the water came out and it kept flowing the whole time. It never stopped. Just huh. so you know, yeah, it's an old school well, trick, man. Let me. Let the me. The process did seem possible, so I mean, it did seem plausible. So I'd still well, like you to look at it to see what you you have to say about it. Yeah, dude, though. I love to look at it. I got a question though. I gotta ask Sean. Sean. Can I show Charlie C's uh, Tesla coil? I just thought it was interesting. I gotta see if Sean's okay with that. So what? What, tes, tes, what do you mean, Charlie C's Tesla coil? He, what was his Tesla coil? Sean helped him with the Tesla coil, and he put some water to it, and it just—it's it, not so much the Tesla coil that's sparking off that I thought was the coolest part. It's just. I don't use water in my computer at all, but uh, Charlie used it to cool down his uh, number uh, one coil. So when huh. Sean says, says it's okay, I'll do it. If not, I won't. So Yeah, I never thought about that water cooling a Tesla coil. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was just out of the blue. And with Sean, you never know what's going to happen when he, he's over there helping somebody. <laughs> I, I mean, for God's sakes, man, who ever thought of a round Tesla coil? But yeah. I know, like it, it's it's insane. It's oh, really you should, cool. You should see the other stuff he's working on, man. He's got so many windings in there with the he, he used the 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 square uh, or rectangular. I don't, I can't remember which one it was, but it was the uh, winding, the wire. It was actually uh, like a square shape. It's totally hmm. different. So, oh, Bob anyway. Greener is actually live right now. That's cool. Right on. Well, bring up your uh, video, man. We'll take a look while we're waiting for an answer. Yeah, I got it up right here. I just need to look for the correct part. Uh... Hmm. Siphoning, yeah. That's just like you do to your gas tank. If you ever been poor and you got two cars of gas, yeah, you know what? Oh, two cars, one without. Yeah, you know what that's all about. <laughs> okay, I got it. Uh, oh. Ad. Dang, I got hit with an ad. Stand by. <laughs> Eliminating ad. Yeah, you, you really need to get, get upgrade your stuff here, Ben, when you get monetized and get to YouTube without the ads. Yeah. 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 Premium would be would be nice for live stream now that I'm thinking about it. You know, you're right. I should probably do that. Uh, yeah, just anyways. You get, get your money flowing in, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's a good that's a good idea because uh, um, I didn't even think about that honestly. Here we go. It's through various variations. In this one, which is quite nice, this one here, they have a large tank here going into a well through a small bore tube here, okay, and uh, a fat outlet, and they actually put a membrane on the top, which is see through a, a polymer membrane and you can see it very very substantially suck down okay so it's creating the same vacuum effect but this is quite simple by uh comparison and he, it, it, th this is you know this is another very simple one but like i would encourage you to go and have a look at this um this for me is That's one of my right favorite there. ones because i think this is the one we might attempt to replicate 
Uh, it's really rather simple. And this guy has done a wide variety of these same things. This, this is different in that he forces the vacuum in this tube to, to create the initial effect. And it's not so plausible. But uh, um, like I say, there's a wide, wide variety of these things. You can, you can clearly see the pipe here. And, you know, one might argue there's some sort of pump in here and, and so forth. But, you know, it's not hard to <laughs> build these things. I know all the skills to do it, having just done it the last two weeks. So I think we might attempt this with Jordan just for shits and giggles. Okay, so I'm going to show. So what do you think? Yeah, no, it, you can do it by siphoning. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Yeah. That's all you gotta do. You could yeah. you could suck on a garden hose in a pool mm. and it'll siphon it right out. Uh, you know what I mean? Just when it starts the yeah. water starts coming in your mouth, you put it to the side and it just starts coming out and doesn't stop. Yeah, you just gotta give it a little kickstart or whatever. Just, yeah. Yeah. Show this video here he because does. uh you get to see him build it. Okay. And you know, there's one thing different links here, but I'm just gonna what I like is they're using a lot more water, so compressed. it looks better. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, into a one standard right, right. size of pipe, and then it's got an expanded area here and uh, and a drop down. And these parts of the pipe are really just for support, and you'll see the thing being constructed. Yeah. And structures might be going on is that PVC can get charged, okay? Uh and there will be friction with the water. Water going up that narrow tube will create a toroidal vortex. In fact, it will be like a Kármán street, Kármán vortex street, but in toroids that are traveling up that tube. Because it's a polar molecule, it's naturally charged separated, and you've got a the, 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 the end molecules of PVC are such that they will likely encourage um, the easy water or inverse easy water it doesn't matter actually um but charge separation within the polar charges of the water that produces your toroidal vortex in the long thin column and what that will do in my view is for a proportion of that water it may cause it to produce water gas okay may cause it to produce water gas and the water gas then tries to push back against the check valve and closes it. And the only way it can expand then is to push water uphill. Uh, because uh, water gas, as we know, is 1,617 times larger than water. So you only need to convert a minute amount of this water. Yeah, so he's basically saying you're compressing it in such a way that creates like a vortex and that, that yeah. creates like a vacuum. And yeah. it continuously works. And it, yeah, it makes sense. And uh, it, supposedly there's a lot of different devices like this. And it makes sense like you know, like from your perspective, you're like, yeah, yeah, we rig these things up all the time. <laughs> you, you've never siphoned gas? <laughs> no, I haven't. Oh. But, um, well, let me, let me tell you the old redneck way to do it. You take your <laughs> <Okay>. hose. <laughs> take your little clear hose, okay? You shove it in the, in the gas can, right? Mm -hmm. You suck on it until the, the, the stuff comes right up to your mouth, right? And you put your mm -hmm. thumb over it. And just turn it down and then let go. And you'll just start pouring it out. And you'll continue to siphon until it's gone because you created the vortex. Wow. <coughs> That's so cool. It's the same kind of effect. It, it, yeah. It's a vortex. It's a, a Schauberger. Schauberger. Victor mm. Schauberger. I can't say his name for whatever reason. <laughs> it's okay. Schauberger. There you go. I, I don't even know if that's right. But yeah, basically, and uh, even the forward head of the Taurus um, will cause. He just has to give it a little view, start, like you said. You know, uh, suck it a little bit. Some water gas and, to be yeah. synthesized, and you really only need a very so small amount of water it, yeah. gas to be synthesized. He's getting to that push water, the in water there. up against the check valve at the bottom, and uh, that will cause water to come over. The water to come over will then pull a bit more water up, and the the point is, is like. I almost don't care whether this is fake because it's so simple to try and replicate if what you're seeing is, you know, what it is. Mm -hmm. Should have wrote it like yeah. a sawhorse or something. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. And we don't we don't see device and you know we don't see devices like this really being sold, right? Because they want to sell you those expensive pumps with the the motors on them and stuff. Yeah. No. Look. Let's be honest with you. We could take a water wheel and mm -hmm. create this suction. 
and just put the hose right over top of the water wheel and it'll continue to turn it and you get free energy all day long out of it. Yeah. That's a, I mean, it's That's not awesome. a whole lot, but it's, yeah, better but it's, than, it's better than a fan. It, right. Right. It, I mean, why, why even put these big fans in the desert? Like they here have it in California. Why? When I could just do this so much simpler. Oh, uh, right. Ray car posted a video, water cooled spark gap. I might pull that up. Yeah, water cool. I've seen that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, let me pull it up real quick. Say I'm gonna vet it real quick to make sure it's not like pornography or nothing. You know, no. sometimes people send us that, but it looks like a YouTube link, so we should be good, good. for you. <laughs> I click on things and get in trouble. No, I I do too, and I have to remember remember and remind myself. Like, look, you know, not everybody's a, a an honest actor out there. <laughs> All right, Ray Car, what do you got? Let's hope it's not porn. Yeah, this is no no uh, um, judgment on you or anything. This is just saying in general. I'm just yeah. messing with him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, man. What do we got? You got it yet, Ben? I'm just typing it in. <laughs> I don't know how to copy it. Do you know how to copy comments in StreamYard? Copy them? I don't know. I Yeah, I haven't figured it out. And it won't let you, like, you know, copy you it. You can't manually. just click on it? No, it's hide or show. It doesn't let you like highlight the text. So, not that I know. Go go back over to your uh, normal stream and pull it up. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, and just click on it. Yeah, they let you put them in the private chat. Hmm. I gotta figure out which one it's on. Is it on Bernie's or is it on mine? Oh. Uh, Ray cars and Bernie's. Okay. Yeah, I got it right here. Okay. Got it. All right. Let's see what we got. Do your vetting process. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're running high Let's voltage. See. All right. Right up my alley. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, let me mute the volume real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Mute the volume. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I see this guy. He's like perfected some spark gap in water. It's really awesome. What? I mean, water is a conductor, so it's just like you, you, you would have to separate the charges in order to do that, right? Well, let's just see how he does it. And we'll take a look. Yeah. He's like, come on, check this out. That's so cool. Look at that cube. I love it. That is neat. That's like applying the, the Tesla coil spark gap to, to art. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, look, look at that. that cube. I love oh I love the dude. I would pay for something like that. That is so cool. Yeah, he's definitely got water. something going on there, man. I like it. And that's water in that little dish? Yeah. 30 degree angle. Hold on, hold on. I want to go back. I want to take a look at that. That was quick. All right, so we got PR, uh, PFR positive flow receiver on the top. We got the GFE ground flow emitter coming in from the side and up through the center at a 30 degree angle. And then the water filling the, the bowl. Yeah, I, I agree with Raycar there. He does have some awesome videos. I like this guy. Yeah, let's check this out. Um, actually, I got to go to the bathroom, so I'll be right back. But I'll, I'll. Oh, he said throw on some closed captions uh, while the volume's off. Yes, yes, that's a good idea. Thank you. I forgot about that. All right. Oh, look at that. You just 3D so printed those, huh? That's pretty cool. That doesn't yeah. look hard to build. No, it looks kind of simple. Oh, it's way awesome. All right. I can do that. Going to have to give this a try. I got plenty of high voltage around here. Okay. Simple wire. Pick that up at your hardware store. Right there, just copper wire. Cool.
Oh, look at that. He's got different ends. That's pretty awesome. Just switch them in and out. Let's see. He's got the same setup in all of them. That one's got three wires coming off it. Never one. Okay. One gets you fire. Ooh, I might just try one just to see it. Hmm. Yeah, experiment with different shapes, yeah. What is that, it's Tesla coil? It looks like it's Tesla coil. Wow, that's cool. Asymmetric spark cap, huh? Oh. All right, what do we got? We got a bunch of them in liquid. What does he got going on there? Applicants. Man, that looks just clean. Yeah, and there's something in the, the water over there. It's like blue. Yeah. Uh, electrolyte, maybe? Charge capacitance, huh? Safety electorate. I gotta try safety. Oh, so he's got special water in there too. Okay, hold on. This reminds me of something like EDM or something uh, where they use uh, high voltage and some water to cut through materials. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. yeah that's neat. He's talking about splitting water in two, huh? That's cool. I'd go back and rewatch that. Is he talking about separating the charges? Is that what he means by splitting it in two? Uh, I'm sure it does in a minute, huh? huh. Interesting. <laughs> right on. Yeah, that's a cool video, man. I like that. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to check on the frame here. We might be ready to uh, start that wiring pattern. Yeah, get that wire going. All right. It feels solid. Nice. Yeah, it good. So while I do this, let's. Uh, I had another video that I wanted to pull up and check out. The water molecules are uh, reduce weak nuclear forces. I guess. Hmm. That's cool. I like that. Good evening, welcome to my laboratory. 
Uh, what I've got here is a Tesla bifiler coil, uh, flat pancake coil. It has an inductance. This is the one I just wound. It has an inductance of about 640 microhenries. And uh, this is a little magnetic compass. And right now it is pointing correctly to north. And what I'm going to do is set it down on the Tesla bifiler coil right there. And uh, I have the Tesla bifiler coil hooked up through a 54.3 ohm carbon resistor to the output of the Interstate F43 function generator. And I've got the function generator set on uh, a very slow pulsation. This is not nearly as slow as it will go. I'm still in the normal uh, range of the frequency multiplier, not the uh, one one hundredth frequency. But we're down near the bottom of the dial, and I have it set to produce a uh, oops, sorry, a positive and negative going square wave uh, output. Right now, I've got the output turned way way down, and what I'm going to do is just turn the output up while you watch here. Okay. So here comes the output, turning up. And now I'm going to play with the frequency just a little bit. I'm just very carefully adjusting the frequency. If I get it set just right. Get that. There we go. Now, does this mean that there's a rotating magnetic field in there? Uh, no, it doesn't. It, this is a type of mechanical resonance where we're driving the positive and negative going field, which is radially looping through the coil like this, uh, at the correct frequency to uh, mechanically resonate, if you will, the magnetic compass. And so it goes around in a circle. 
And if I can catch that just at the right place, I can actually make it accelerate. Now I'm just very gradually increasing the frequency of the function generator. Okay, that, oops, fell, it dropped off. But you can still see the uh, compass dipping there. Let's see if I can get back down to a value that will start it, start it oscillating again. So this actually, now that I'm watching it, is explaining magnetic synchronicity a lot better. Um, it's not actually um, spinning. Uh, the vo magnetic field isn't actually spinning, but it's uh, that's causing the neodymium sphere to spin. But it's actually um, resonating with it. So it's it's causing it to resonate with um, the pulse that you're providing it, and that's providing the spin at least according to this video, which actually makes a lot of sense. Hmm. So with that, I'm going to show you real quick um, before I start winding. And then Nathan, if you have anything you want to show us while I wind. But um, I started here. Let me, uh, how do I pull this up? Okay. So I started, as you can see in the middle here, Actually, I started on the wrong one. My bad. So we're going to start in the middle. Don't do what I did. <laughs> um, we're going to start in the middle one here, right where the ring is. So if you can see that uh, right here, we're just going to loop it around a couple of times and give yourself enough uh, lead for you to actually use. So um, don't leave yourself with like an inch to use and to connect to something, you know. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this wire and stretching it all the way across to the, the one right next to it and then going up one. And then every time we're going to do that same process, stretch it over and then up one, right? Next ring, stretch it over and then up one. So you're you're creating that see so you're creating that curve that incline. And while you're doing that, keep in mind you want to, you know, try to smooth out all the bends. I know the bundle will be easier to work with because it'll be um bundled together and it'll have more structure. But uh if it's like you see like a little bend, you know, catch it fast. A stitch in time saves nine. So um, by the time, you know, you don't want to find yourself at the end of the wind and find, oh, you got a small bend here and you want to fix it. It's, it's not really going to fix because you've got all that tension already on it. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to continue this process and 
Nathan, if you have anything you want to show us. I'll pull that uh here we go. Oh, there I am. Okay. Yeah, I got something to show you. I I'll probably get in trouble for this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. <laughs> it's not anything bad, it's something super cool, but uh I don't think I have permission, but I'm gonna share. So this right here is Charlie C's Tesla coil. Look at the water in there. Go into his uh, number one coil. I just think it's so awesome. It it it, it cools it slightly, but it's more of a look. It just kind of it adds something to a Tesla coil that you don't see every day, but it's still functional. So I'll hit play on that. That's so cool. I love the water going in. Huh. All right. So anyway, that was pretty cool. I just wanted you guys to see that. Uh, it's just the water pump from a uh, computer, like, and he put it right into his coil. I just thought that was so interesting. So... Let's remove that. I'll go ahead and show you guys. Uh, I built my Tesla coil and got it going too a while back with Sean's help. And I'll show you that. Let me just share the screen. And here we go. So it's pretty simple. This is just a ZVS, cheap $30 GVS. It's got uh, two different capacitors. We took out all the other ones that were in there. And it's really cool. It runs on AC right there. And we hooked it up special. You have to watch the video to figure it out. But it's, it's really easy to do. Got the Variac. All right, let's get to the good part. So you can see I, I drew exactly where everything is uh, straight across from it. And we actually get uh, close to a 12 inch spark out of this thing. It's really amazing. So, oh. come on now. Let's get it to the point where it lights up. There we go. All right. Oh, let me turn the volume on on that. Yeah, I hit 12 there. Let's just so you guys know, I got it up to 12 inches on that Tesla coil, man. That thing was awesome. By the way, thank you, Sean. Big shout out to Sean right here. One of the most amazing people I ever met and uh, amazing at building Tesla coils. So thank you. He helped me out with that a lot. So that was pretty cool. Yes, yeah, I'll share another video with you. I want to share this 
So we're just going to look at this. I had somebody uh, validate this uh, while Ben's working over there. What we're doing is we're changing frequency and amps and everything else. Going on here. So the crew's over here, right? So you notice what's happening here, right? You see how the frequency is changing, right? We have response there. Now let's look over here, right? So we initially dialed it up to 12 volts, but you can see we're just under four amps to draw, right? So when we actually change the pulse width, check this out. See that? See how the amps start dropping and the voltage rises, right? It's an inversion. All right, we'll go the other way. Notice the amps are rising, voltage is dropping, right? There's your duty cycle action. I haven't adjusted the voltage at all, okay? Now, when we look at the frequency, what happens this time, right? As I go up in the frequency, the amperage drawn goes down, right? And there it is, you hear that? That's what we're talking about right there. He's totally right. There's a five to one, okay? As we know, everything is connected. You know, you can't just change one thing and expect to get something, you know, isolated. Everything changes and moves with it. All right, so we're also looking at the actual resonant frequency of the the flyback system itself, right? So I'm changing the pulse width. You notice we dropped a voltage, right? There's a raise in amperage, pulse width down, right? Raise in voltage, drop in amperage. See that? Now we're increasing the frequency. Now we're decreasing the frequency. Now you, can, you hear that, right? So we're coming out of the ultrasonic range Right? And this has a lot to do with the, the resonant frequency of our flyback, right? So everyone's slightly different. you got to kind of find your zone. So look where we're at right now. Eight grand. Right, let's take it all the way. Right? So you see that? Now we're way high on the amperage, right? So we'll change the pulse width. Yeah, wrong way, right? See that? Lowering of amperage, raising of voltage. Right? You can hear it kind of slowing down. So yeah, highly recommend checking out Old Man Build's video on this particular subject. There is a lot going on, right? All right. Thanks, you guys, for watching. Hope that kind of makes some sense, right? So as you can see, everything in there, it just changes. So when somebody tells me the wattage on their project, it's kind of hard to evaluate all the time because your volts and your amps change no matter what your wattage is because the wattage is simple multiplication. So... Yeah, you, you kind of have to watch it and, and see what it's doing. And it's just cool to see somebody out there that took my understanding because all I did was a video like this and I was just talking to the camera and telling them what goes on based on, you know, the projects that I have going on in, in my garage. And then he took that and he did the test himself and found it out. Now, I've done that test a million times. I can tell you it works all day long. But to see somebody else do that and validate your work was totally awesome. So... Big thumbs up, man. Thank yeah, you for that. It's really cool to see. That is. So how are you doing on your coil there, Ben? Uh, Good. I had to start the wind over again because the wire got tangled. I guess it was tangled in the spool, so I just cut it and start over. Well, oh, gotcha. It'll be a while. <laughs> yeah, it could be a few minutes, guys. Yeah, right on. We'll just find another video, man. See what else we got on this thing. Uh, 
Oh, man, let's check this one out. I don't know if you guys are into this kind of stuff, but uh, I definitely am. Let's see. We'll share this. On the French think tank, we had the opportunity to have Merkaba in. He built a machine that he calls the Merkaba machine. What it does is it's shaped like the actual Merkaba, but on the inside it's using sound in order to spin a neodymium magnet that's circular or a sphere. That sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? Sound? You don't see a speaker in sight. Well, I guess you could say he's using frequency to do it. I like to look at it as using sound to do it. Either one. What's going on is all of the wrappings that you see around it creates a magnetic field. And then he takes another coil, and you can see where the arrows are. Those right there are making the second coil. So in a way, it's like a speaker. Is it producing sound or frequency? Well, to give you a hint, he's using a stereo receiver in order to drive everything. When we had a chance to talk to the inventor, he said that he can change between the frequencies and each frequency would make the neodymium ball do something a little different or spin in a different direction. You could not use every single one of them at the same time, but you can use each one of them at one time. So if you had a song playing, it would then go to each one of them and turn them on individually. Now that I brought you up to date on what the machine is doing, I just want to tell you I keep getting a nagging feeling. There's something more to this that we're just not seeing. I keep seeing it in my head, and it's about time that I get it out. This is what I keep seeing in my head. I keep seeing a round sphere of water. I continuously see the quartz crystal on the inside. I also see two rods going in there, and they have little flat ends so they can sit against the crystal. I know the configuration sounds strange, but jump down the rabbit hole with me and let's take a look. If we understand piezoelectricity, when you strike two pieces of quartz together, they create light. What they're doing is creating energy on the inside. Now, we generally use quartz crystal as a clock feature. Tap it once, it taps back, put tuning forks on both sides and you can activate it. Put it in pressure, and then you can use it as well. It's great for tuning. However, when you want power out of it, you must activate the crystal in a way that is not like everything else. It needs to be smacked together or it needs something smacking it. So how do we accomplish that? Well, you can't just go smacking two crystals together while it's in a bowl full of water. That doesn't work at all. Right now, the machine is set up to put out sound or frequency, and that's not going to do it either. So we have to change this just a little bit. Let's attach those coils to piezoelectric discs. We'll put the piezoelectric disc on the outside of the sphere of water. Then we can create a pulse wave to go into the water. So I know what you're thinking. What's a little pulse wave going to do to this? Well... If you connect, instead of a stereo receiver, you connect an ultrasound device, now we're getting a pretty heavy pulse. But please understand that piezoelectric discs are receivers and transmitters. So while each one's going off individually, the other ones are receiving the same signal. It's going to create a giant echo chamber in there, or a resonance chamber, in order to resonate the actual quartz itself. That's where we're going to get our power. Let's just talk about the shape itself of the quartz. It's actually set up as a makaba as well. Now, this is for a certain reason. As you see on your screen, all these balls coming into the center of a makaba. What is it that we're looking at doing? Well, this is actually from the creator of the machine. And what he's saying is the energy itself goes into the center just like that. And it doesn't like to stay there perfectly. It keeps moving in continuous motion. 
That's exactly what we want to produce in the center of our quartz. In order to activate it, we must always keep it in a resonant state. So now that we have all this energy in the center, how does the energy flow actually work? If we were going to talk about the conventional way to use quartz crystal, we would think energy in, energy out. But that's not what we're doing here. We're taking piezoelectric disc and we're creating a pulse wave in order to activate the crystal inside. So all we need to do is pull the energy out. Because the energy needs to be activated in something, you cannot pull it out by putting pressure on the side. You can get a small amount of energy. You cannot get a big amount of energy. Therefore, the fluid itself has to act as a go-between. It has to be able to go with the water getting energized, and then you pull the energy from the water. Therefore, in the end of each rod, you would need a sponge-like material in order to keep it always wet and always flowing. Because we're in the rabbit hole, let's go ahead and jump in a little deeper. Ask yourself, over time, did we tell ourselves it was there? Do we have these shapes all around us and we just don't understand what they're for? Let's take a look at many shapes around here that are in the macabre shape and let's see what people think about them. As I see all these shapes and structures, I'm starting to realize one thing. Maybe it's all supposed to be this way. Crystalline shape in the center, macabre on the outside. Maybe there's something to this. It seems that everybody who looks at these has some form of this vision in their head. Otherwise, they have one other. It seems to be that they are telling us that there's something that has to go into the crystal. We see these shapes doing it. There's also these shapes where they go around it, saying that there's some kind of uniformity to everything. When I said it was like a resonance chamber, maybe they thought the same thing. Maybe this image shows that it was a resonance chamber. Since we are completely lost in the rabbit hole, let's continue one step further. These are the images I also see out there. A human figure inside the macabre. Why would that even make sense? Well, we have crystalline in our body. We actually can make it when we have gout or it's in our brain as well. It's crazy. Maybe it's saying that we can communicate on some scale once we actually activate the crystal itself. That's just amazing. But there's one more step in the rabbit hole. We can go just a little deeper. This is what I keep seeing. However, someone else must have seen it that way too, because this is what they made. This is what they drew. This is what they put up in their program in order to make it. So you can see this picture. Is it really, truly the energy source for a ship? Is there something more to this? Well, we're just going to have to find out, aren't we? At some point, we're going to have to build something like this. Guys, we're already deep in the rabbit hole. You never know what's coming next. That's why it's the fringe think tank. It's not the NASA think tank. It's not the everybody approves of it think tank. It's the fringe think tank where we go outside the box and look at everything everyone else won't. If you want to catch an episode of the fringe think tank, it goes on every Monday night, 3 p.m., Pacific Standard Time. That was pretty cool. Ben, where are you at? So, I am on the fourth go-round on the first pattern, not the interference pattern. So, here, I don't know if you can see. Hold on, let me put you up solo here. Hold on. So, as you can see... I'm on the fourth one and it's a little bit easier on the second and third round. Cause you can kind of use the first one as a guide where to go. How many times you got to go on that? Uh, let's see. This is 
It depends on how many you have. Let's see. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. About twelve or thirteen. Huh. Thirteen. So you can't wrap it once and then multiply it by how many you have? Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. No, 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 that that's what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna wrap it um one time and then the one time with the interference pattern. Yeah, I'm gonna wrap it fully, and then okay. and then I'm gonna take it off and then measure the whole, gotcha. and then multi and then multiply it by twenty four. Okay, that sounds better. I was gonna say you'd be there all yeah. day. No, 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 no. It's huh. that's the plan, and I'm. It's not gonna take that long. As long as I got it started here, it's gonna take maybe another fifteen twenty minutes tops. Huh. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. All right. Let me put you back on normal. You can go back to winding that thing. <laughs> All right. Let's see what else we got going on. Uh, I like that Makaba machine. By the way, on uh, on Monday, Makaba should be joining us. Okay. We also have Ian joining us. So those nice. two in the room with the rest of us, man, would be totally awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a pretty fun show on Monday, so I can't wait for that, man. We're uh, yeah, I'm excited, man. You got me all awesome. excited, Nathan. <laughs> Is it Monday yet? Come on, guys. Yeah. One you more haven't day. hit the subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button and ju uh, join us tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 3 p.m. if you're on the West Coast. Yeah. It's gonna be a great show. I, I can tell you that if we have those uh, guests on. Yeah, both those guys were fascinating last time. So, you know, I can't wait. And the, the way they do things and the sound and everything, they both talk about harmonics and stuff like that. So yeah, awesome. That'd be just awesome to hear the conversation between the two of them on that alone. So I'm excited for that. Yes, yes. Ideas are coming together. People are coming together. If we could have a, a in-person potluck at this point, we would. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> well, like Gerald said, you know, it'd have to be on the uh, Canadian border up there where we all got oh, together. I, no, I'd that, be up that's for that. fine with me. Yeah, I'd be up for that too, for sure. So let's take a look and we'll go to this one. Normally, I would tell you exactly what's going on. Normally, I would tell you exactly what's going on in an experiment. However, this time... I'd like to hear from all of you. What do you think's going on here? As you can see, that's not paper. That's not uh, foil. What it is is a piece of packing material or styrofoam type material. Let's see what it does. Uh, not quite lifting. It's clinging, and then it lifts. Oh, and it, oh, that's pretty cool. I bet a lot of people right now are taking eye on wind. Is it? Let's see the next one. Now we have some paper in there. It's got some sharp edges, guys. Look at it. Oh, it's just bouncing in between. Is this a little bit more of two fields and something going in between it for a little levitation effect? This is the power source behind the whole thing. Let's take a look. So the actual experiment is pretty small. And we can see on the very left side that we have a DC power supply. We can see on the right side we have a motor driver. And then we can see up on the top we have a DC flyback transformer. So we know that there's high voltage going on, and we know that the high voltage is actually adjustable. So here's all the parts for it. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at possibilities that this could be. This right here is possibility number one, levitation. We've all probably watched this on the Plasma channel. You have an anode on the top, a cathode on the bottom. It's high voltage, and in between, you have a piece of tinfoil. 
it works on changing the actual charges in an item in order to get it to levitate where it is. Here are the charges that you can see right here, negative on the top, positive on the bottom. The negative goes up to the negative and the positive is subtracted also to the bottom. Now this experiment cannot work with sharp edges on the top. It has to be rounded. On the bottom, it doesn't matter so much. So is this a possibility? This is possibility number two, it's ion wind. This is an ion wind lifter. It has a high voltage wire on the top, aluminum on the bottom. Positive goes to the top and negative goes to the aluminum on the bottom. Now it also has to work with a sharp edge on the top and then it has to be a rounded edge at the bottom where it starts and then as it goes down, you can get any kind of crazy you want and it'll still work. However, it still works between two high voltage fields. Like I said, the high voltage is a flyback transformer to get this one to work as well. The wind is created between the top wire and the bottom aluminum, and it forces the item to go up because the weight is reduced enough that the wind will actually propel it up. Is this a possibility of what's going on here? So let's throw a curveball at the ion wind people out there because they always tell me everything's ion wind. So let's reverse the field. Negative on top, positive on bottom. What happens? It actually pull down to the table below. Also in ion wind, if you do not separate the table itself from the ion lifter, in most cases it will not lift. Why? Because the polarization of the charges will suck it down to the table. So is it still ion lift? Let's see if we have another possibility. Let's go a little old school with this one. This is a static electricity experiment. It works by putting paper on the ground. Then you charge your body with static electricity and the paper will actually lift to your hand. This experiment works because the negative is actually the ground itself and the positive is the static electricity. It gets the object charged, and as it's charged, it'll lift towards the positive charge. Now, this isn't ion wind at all. This is charged particles. So is this a possibility? Is this something that uh, that's going on here? Let's go ahead and take a look at the experiment one more time. This was the second one. This is the paper. As you see, it sits in between two fields. Now there's no change in the electricity in this guys between what's going on right here in this experiment and what goes on in the next one. It's the same power source. As you can see, we got a foam type material here or you know, a, a different type of material anyway, more like a scrubber pad type of material here. Anyway, it has different properties as it lifts here. It is not the same type of lift, but the power source is the same. So, is it the same thing? Is it the same process going on here? Guys, this is a question for you, not for me. So you tell me in the comments, what do you think it is going on here? Is there more than one effect going on here? Is it basically just eye on wind like everybody claims everything is? Or is there something more going on here? All right, let's go back to the regular layout. What do you guys think it is? Any any guesses out there? What do you think, Ben? You got an idea? I have absolutely no idea. I know it's <laughs> I know it's not what we think it is, though. I know it's not ionic wind. <laughs> so so what everybody tells me in the comments when I do something like that. So I just I'm always kind of curious what people th seem to say. So, well, I guess nobody's going to answer it. So, I'll just answer it for you. He's charging it. He's just creating a charge field. Mm -hmm. And in that charge field, it moves from one to the next. That's it. It just has a flow direction. That's about as simple as it gets. It's the same thing uh, when I showed you the stuff from uh, Plasma Channel. He's, uh, yeah. Sean got it. Electric charge and repulsion. That's exactly what it is. It, it, 
it's easy to identify when you've done it. It's so hard if you've never seen it before because you start guessing at everything that it could be instead of, you know, hey, it's it's directly this. You didn't see any plasma breakout, so ion wins out of the picture. Uh, you see that it's between the two fields, but even with the, if you turn the life off and that same experiment's going on, there there is no discharge happening. That's a state where you get absolute charge. That's it. It's just moving between two charged fields. So, anyway, just thought that was pretty cool. How you doing over there, Ben? Doing pretty good. Almost finished with the first uh, wine pattern, and then we're going to start with the interference pattern. Man, that does take a while. How long have you been at it now? Well, I had to start over a couple of times because the wire got tangled, and um, I decided to switch to uh, this small spool, which can fit through the tour of the donut. So I, I'm not going to mess with the, the wire and not – because that's – I mean, I've, I've done it before. You have to be very careful. And when it's bundled, it's easier to do. But this single strand wire, no. It's just going to get tangled if you don't spool it up or have it, you know, in a neat um, spool like that. Should have got that rope. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wanted to do this and get it done, though. And, and you know, it's – it's something that, you know, uh, fits in with uh, today's class. So it's all relevant. I, I think it's 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 no big big deal. I like doing it. Yeah, by the way, Sean, you're probably right. Uh, Anti-gravity. So anytime you're in a static field, you have an opportunity for an anti-gravity effect if you can create a longitudinal wave in it. So... Yeah, you just have to know that. And once you do, the secret's out, man. You can start doing some of this stuff. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. Man, England, nine hours difference in the time. Man, that's a lot. That's a uh, mock buzz out that way. Uh, I think uh, every time we connect, it's like eight hour difference. So, yeah, probably a different part, but yeah, got it. That's pretty cool. All right, so we'll have to find something else to watch, huh, Ben? Yes. All right. Let's see. What do we got going on now? Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's. Oh, we're talking about static charge. Let's just let's just get into it, I guess. Guys, have you seen the paper lifter experiment at all? You know what it is? Let me, I'll pull it up. I'm going to use absolute charge on this thing. It's really cool. If I can find it. So, oh, is that you in the background, Pin? Oh, Making, yeah, my bad. Huh, it's all right. I'm just listening. I hear some weird stuff going on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Once I get past all the high voltage on my channel. Okay. Paper lifter right here. Okay. So this is a pretty cool experiment. This is when you take out everything and just show the charge on it. You guys, this is really cool. Uh, it's a little paper lifter. Uh, it's just made out of uh, printer paper. And the top is uh, positively charged and the bottom is negatively charged. And I just want to show you this. As you plug it in, it lifts and then it lets go when you unplug it. And it'll stay right there. Now, usually, this is done with a uh, what is it, Wim Hertz machine, uh, static electricity. Uh, this time, we're doing it with high voltage. So, I'll show you it's just... Plug it in, lift, and there's a lot of wind that comes off of it. And uh, maybe I'll show it on my fog machine later. But there's a lot of wind that comes off of this thing once it's plugged in. Now, I did change the voltage source to so get a bit higher. I ran uh, two of these in series, okay, with one driver, okay. And again, this is just a, uh, what is it, 19 volt and 2.37 amps 
is the uh, is the power source here. I don't know if you see that any good. Anyway, this is just the power source. But they run positive to negative, and then positive obviously goes up to your positive top plate, and then uh, negative goes to your bottom plate here. Okay, it does make a difference on size. The top has to be bigger than the bottom. I'll, uh, I'll link this to another video where the guy does it on the uh, static electricity machine. But I wanted to show you with voltage that this can be done as well. It's part of a uh, lift. So hopefully, uh, you know, that's a lot of voltage right there. That's probably about two inches in voltage is what it comes out of this thing. It's pretty gnarly. Uh, I think I can maybe up it with some capacitors that I built. So Let's see. I just wanted to show you guys. There's no ion wind there, by the way. Uh, when I ran my fog machine on it, there there wasn't any. It, it was all stuck inside that little paper UFO. There was no ion wind. Okay? It was crazy. I put the fog machine on it, and you can see it. We didn't move. So, pretty, pretty awesome experiment. Teaches you about charge and the difference between you know, creating ion wind and charge and what they do and how far apart you got to have things, the actual voltage going in. Like I said, the first guy used a Wimhurst machine. You can also use a, uh, oh, what do they call it? A big static electricity machine. One of those things, uh, you can use that or you can use high voltage DC if you know what you're doing. It'll all do the same thing. It's all about charging up that UFO and getting it to move. So that was it on that one. Oh, you almost done there, Ben. Almost. <laughs> All right, I'll find something else. Let's see if I have some more experiments on this. Let's uh move that one. And I'll share another one. <sighs> Let's see which one it was. Oh, okay. Uh, paper lifter experiment. That's the one it is. Right there. That, that's not it. Oh, oh. There we go. That's the one I want. So this one here is upside down, and, and it shows the force. So I just wanted to show this. I'm going to turn the power now. Uh, my question was on this is if you flip it upside down, will it still try to lift? And, well, the answer is no. And what's going on is... Oh, there you go, Van de Graaff. It's heavily forcing itself down now to this bottom plate it's going the opposite direction so just like it was on the lift it's attracted to the bigger plate so no not by turning it upside down will it do as a matter of fact it just forces this bottom plate the more you do this straight down so there's a heavy lift factor there or or weight factor there however you want to say it um it's definitely pushing against the uh, bigger plate from the smaller one so we'll have to figure out a little bit more uh, on why. And then maybe we'll throw in uh, one of these aluminum foil chains of plates. We'll see what. Anyway, that was pretty cool. So. Yeah, that was neat. <laughs> Turn that off. All right. So clear these out. Sean wanted to see the UFO bubble. So. Let's see. Let's put that on. Take me just a second. Okay, this is, by the way, I'm going to show you guys this. This is the theory on how to create the uh, the field bubble uh, in a UFO. Somebody, what a UFO field is. Generally, this is what comes to mind. 
So when I tell them it actually looks more like this, they get completely confused. They don't understand why there's a field inside the UFO and also why this field continues to build. The simple answer is the outside and the inside are built with two totally different forms of energy. To better understand this, let's just go back to the basics. This is a simple toroidal structure, and if I ask you to build a field around it, this is the most common answer that you would give. A toroid builds magnetic field lines that go around it in one direction. The next step would look like this. You add wire to the toroid. Then it builds a field based on the wire and where it's placed. The problem is a toroid or a toroid with wire around it does not build a field that looks anything like this. So let's just start over. Is a toroid really what you want at the center of your UFO? And the answer simply is no. So if it's no, what do we need to put there instead? We need to build a flow pattern into the coil. And there's no better way to build a flow pattern than to use sacred geometry. So we start with simple shapes that we know that we can put into a toroidal fashion. Then we start to make them more complex. Each time that we make a shape, we put it into a wire form. Then we test it and we check the flow pattern. We see which ones match and which ones don't. For every new pattern we try, there's always a different outcome. How you connect them and how each one flows matters. We will start to see effects in everything that we do. Sometimes the energy flow can rotate a neodymium sphere magnet in circles. At this stage, we start to push it. We start to imagine this as a 3D shape. Then we start winding coils to build it into a 3D shape. We're looking for a flow. We're looking for energy to move from one point to the other. And what happens when one thing crosses another? And can we still rotate the neodymium magnet in it? The answer is yes. The question then becomes, can we add multiple magnetic fields inside of this coil in order to get something different to happen? This journey is not going to be an easy one. It's not going to come overnight. It's going to take a lot of time and a lot of patience and a lot of practice to get it right. Every single coil you build is different. Every single one has a different outcome. Every one of them creates a different field geometry. It's going to be important to log every single test as you do them so that you can refer back to the notes of the video footage that you took of each single test. This is not an easy task. It will take a lot of time. Please be patient. But the understanding at the end will be completely worth it. But once we have our field coil and we start to understand what it does, what else do we need to put into this device to get us our field flow? Because just this coil as it sits is not going to do it without adding certain effects to it. As we look back at our UFO structure and how the fields are built, we also have to realize we need different types of energy. We're going to need a magnetic field, and we're also going to need a static field. Let's start with the magnetic field. We can use a Tesla coil in order to create a magnetic field on the outside. However, the standard Tesla coil has a weak field that comes out of it. We need to strengthen that or thicken the field. The only way to do that is to rotate the Tesla coil. Now, at this point, I know what you're thinking. We could just put a wire on top of our Tesla coil, spin it, ion wind will spin it around, and we'll get a rotating Tesla coil. However, that's not a rotating Tesla coil at all. That's usage of the Tesla coil that expels energy out, but doesn't give us what we want. 
we physically need to turn the Tesla coil. In a standard Tesla coil, just sitting on your table, will produce energy that looks like this. You get the energy flow pattern that goes around in a circle. However, in the center, you will also get the Tesla coil ring. It is a very distinct looking sine wave. You will see it build up and disperse energy. That's where the energy comes from. It accumulates in the coil and then it bursts out the top. As you can see in this, we see the ring right in the center. The Tesla coil doesn't put out necessarily lines of energy. It puts out a field bubble. However, in order to thicken that bubble and put it around our UFO, we have to rotate it. You have to continuously start new field lines every time that it goes around. Therefore, it'll make the whole thing thicker. That's the only way to get a proper bubble around our UFO. Besides the field bubble, a Tesla coil provides a longitudinal wave. This is going to give us direction on our UFO. It's going to say whether we go up or we go down. As many of you have already figured out, a regular Tesla coil configuration is not going to do that. We are going to have to build a bipolar Tesla coil. We also need to change the orientation that a bipolar Tesla coil is normally in. Again, we're looking for the field energy to go north and south. That means it has to stand straight up with the coil in the center. Now that we have a better understanding of how the outside magnetic field built, now we need to look back at the static inside field that needs to be built as well. This is an ion thruster. As you can see the purple in it, it's making ion wind. The problem here is that it's using the energy. The energy is being transferred into light. It's also being transferred into ions. Therefore, the energy is being used in this process. We need to lower the amperage on this energy in order for it to become static energy. If you do not do this and you do not understand the relationship between frequency and heat and frequency and amperage and voltage and frequency, this is going to be a very hard task to pull off. If you do understand the relationship, then changing this plasma into a static electricity should be the easiest thing in the world to do. Now, it's imperative that it comes out as static electricity. If it comes out as ion wind, you are using the very energy you need to be produced in the bubble and wasting it. It will nullify the field you're trying to create. As you take a look at this picture, you're starting to understand how the fields are being built and why. On the outside, we see our Tesla coil field. It's magnetic. It's going to hold in the static field. The static field in this is shown in purple. We can now see the outside field holding in the inside field. We can also see the flow of the Tesla coil as it wraps around and goes back into the center. What you also notice is the static field does the exact same thing. What does that create in the center? It creates an artificial zero point, a point in which the energy is now. Hey Ben, you get done? Yes, I'm done, and uh, I'm just going to start the interference pattern so you guys can uh, understand how it works, but I'm not going to finish it. I'm going to use uh, this and then times it by 24 and then times that by 2, basically. Okay. So uh, we have... Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Oh. Let me just... Oh, there we go. Go ahead. As you can see, we have a nice wind pattern and it ended up exactly where we started. I'm gonna actually cut this so I can hold it up. Give me one second. By the way, Taryn, yes, we did. 
I received it and I've been looking at it. All right. So, as you can see, we ended up right where we started, right? Now, what do we do with the interference pattern? This is our start point. We're coming back. What we're going to do is bend it underneath and go downward. started here. So this will give us our clockwise wind. We started counterclockwise. Now we're going clockwise. Uh, it's really hard to frame this. Nice. So you can see we went underneath and we just bent it. And we started going the opposite way. And then we're just going to do that. Um, but I'm not going to finish it. I'm just going to um, unwind this and count it. Or uh, I'm going to stretch it out and uh, uh, measure it. Actually, I actually have a wheel measure. I should probably do that in the backyard. I'll do that. All right. Um, yeah, that'll take a minute, though. Right on, man. That looks pretty cool. So, looks like he's out to do something. Ben, you taking that outside to unwind it now? Yeah, so I'm going to unwind it, and I'm going to take it outside and stretch it out and then just use a wheel measure that I have in the truck and just, you know, run it out and see how long it is. You're going to do that later or you're going to do it now? I'll do it now, but I, I don't think I'll do it on camera. I'll probably uh, do it off camera. I don't know if I have the capability Maybe I can put my camera out there. Well, we'll see if the camera works. If it works out there, it works. But if it doesn't, it doesn't. Hmm. I think, Ben, it's going to take a while. So you should probably might just add that to your next live show. Before you start whining, you tell people how long it is. You know what I mean? What time is it? Oh, it's already 7. Yeah, you might be right. It's already 7. <laughs> You've I been on over five hours. I'm having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, I really like building these coils. They're fun. Um, look, it's, it's Hold not. On, let's, like, let's, let's show this off. Yeah, it's hard to see because it's just one wire, but the pattern you see in the in the center, how it produces that vortex pattern in the center. It's very cool, and that's not even the interference pattern. That's just the one wind. So. Again, this is not the final design, guys. This is just to measure out how much coil we actually need for this big boy here. Yeah, great job, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. It's not perfect, but uh, actually, when we have it with the bundle, you see all these like little bends and imperfections? When yeah. we have it with the bundle, it'll be easier for that to straighten out. You know, we yeah, can, yeah. As, our, as we're going, you know, keep it straight, and it'll, it'll look nice this time. I promise. Right on. Well, good like job, this. man. Oh, thank you. I like this orange. It's nice. It's popping. Totally awesome. Yeah, that, that, that orange is going to look good with the red. Yes. Yeah, I, yes. I like it's gonna that. Be, it's going to be nice. So. All right. Now I'm just going to. Yeah, I'll do this uh, later tonight. I'll take it off and I'll measure it out. Um, or maybe I'll just do it on a live stream. If I decide to do a live stream before Fringe uh, Think Tank tomorrow, I'll, I'll do that on, on okay. uh, the live stream. But uh, yeah, this is a nice frame. I like it. I'm excited to use it. And hey, we got the stereo amp receiver. It's supposed to come tomorrow so we can do some more testing. Really? If it comes tomorrow, I'm definitely doing some more testing on, on live stream for sure. Because we'll mark out the neodymium sphere this time. Huh. Right on. Yeah. For sure. I can't Thank wait. you, everybody. Thank you, Charles. Hey, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll let Ben get the last word. It's his stream. Thank you, everybody, for listening to me today and everything else. But, uh, Ben, thank you for building that coil, man. Putting it together. 
and uh, I can't see, wait to see it all done and you start testing on it. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. And uh, before we end the stream, I just have one more segment to do. I'm going to go over to the uh, mini lab over there and just go over the materials list that everybody's going to, all the equipment that everybody's going to need to do this uh, coil class um, when I have it. It's either going to be on the 1st or the 8th, depending on when I get the actual uh, bundle of the spool of coil. All right, Ben, you take care of that. I'm out. Have all a right, Nathan. Day, guys. I Thank appreciate you. everything. Thanks for stopping by. This is like uh, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. People just stop by. and. <laughs> So, um, yes, I'm uh, give me one second, guys. I'm going to pull that up. Uh, let's see. Hey, Ben, you got no sound. Ben, you there? <laughs> Sorry about that, guys.
I I I was trying to turn it off. I turned on his live stream and I he had no sound. Benny, you, Benny, you, you hear there? me now? There you go. For some reason, when you go off stage, sometimes the sound works and sometimes it doesn't. The the mic. Oh, I have no idea what it is, man. I just... Yeah, no, it's it's weird. Sometimes it'll work for you, and sometimes it won't. Um, anyways, I'm just going over the materials list. Sorry, you okay, guys well, missed all that. You may have to start over because I don't think anybody heard you for the last. Yeah, I am gonna have to start over. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll remove myself. Have fun, Ben. Thanks, Nathan. All right, so sorry about that. StreamYards was glitching on us. First thing you're going to need is the most important thing to run a setup like this. Aside from the two multimeters and the Arduino kit for rigging your circuits, however you want them, if you want them rigged like mine, uh, just a basic Arduino kit will do. You might need two Arduino kits to do the reference circuit, though, because they only come with one fan. Now, uh, you're also going to need a stereo amp receiver, something that has the ability to do left and right channel. Uh, so you, uh, unless you're not doing the reference circuit, in which case you only need one channel. So, um, but you need the speaker, uh, you need the ability to put the speaker wire in the back. So it's not just uh, gonna be a digital one. You have to have the, um, the speaker wire capabilities to plug it in. And um, also, you also have to have the ability to have an input of some sort on your uh, stereo amp receiver. So you want to be able to put in some kind of signal, like a tone, some way, whether it's Bluetooth or through the uh, phono cable or whatever. Uh, next very important thing that we're going to need is an electric screwdriver. This is going to be used as a makeshift tool to twist our wires into a smooth bundle. Now, uh, see the next important thing is gloves you're going to need gloves ppe is very important gloves safety glasses and if you're doing any experiments with the neodymium sphere or magnets i highly suggest a hard hat and gloves as well or, i'm sorry hard hat and boots as well and after we um twist our bifiler into a nice smooth bundle we are then going to spool it up with this bad boy, it's just a piece of PVC pipe. Um, and it's uh, the right size and dimensions to fit in the tour so you don't um, bend or snag the wire. You have to be very careful because we don't want to bend it, not necessarily. We want it to be smooth like, like jazz. Uh, so we're gonna use this also. Um, this is PVC pipe. I'm gonna cut a couple of notches on the side and smooth it out on either side so it doesn't snag, but uh, th those notches will be used to set the, to spool the wire. So we're gonna go spool it around. And that, after that, we're gonna need electric tape and a portable grinder. This is a Hardell. So we use this portable grinder in combination with the torch. So the torch, we're gonna use the torch to burn off the enamel. And then we grind what's left off. So the torch is used to burn off most of the enamel so we're not uh, putting too much stress on the wire with the the, um, the grinder here. Because if we sand it too much, we could you know, have micro fractures in the end and it, it could um, kill the wire. So we burn it and then we grind it. Very important. And then, uh, after we twist up our two channels, um, it is recommended uh, by me, I recommend that you test the coil before you solder it. Um, but after you solder it, you're gonna need these. And these are little uh, insulators, insulator coats, jackets, and they're different colors. And you want, and I recommend that you get at least four different colors. And this is very important because if you have four leads or more, you want them uh, to be um, easily organized and you want to be able to keep track of them easy if you're configuring your, configure, uh, your system in different ways, and especially when recording the data so you don't get confused. So I have four different colors that I'm using uh, for the ends. 
heats and you use one of these heat devices. Uh, this is a Yi Ewin mini heat gun, 380 watt. And you use one of these and it heats up the, the um, heat shrink and it just shrinks it. And uh, you have a nice little insulator uh, on top of the ends. And then you can strip it if you need to, or, you know, just make it look nice and so it's safe. So you're not having any connections hanging out and touching anything. So that's uh, the next most important thing. And finally, uh, we have our zip ties. You're going to need at least two big bags of these, uh, at least two bags like this um, for zip ties. And also speaker wire. So you're going to need speaker wire. And the final thing that you will need is some kind of cable if you need to hook up the stereo amp receiver if it doesn't have Bluetooth. So um, that's pretty much it. If anybody has any questions, drop them in the chat before I end the stream. If not, um, I'll go to my uh, page. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and like the, the uh, live stream here. But uh, make sure you go to my page and go to live. And uh, if you're interested in the class, go ahead and hit the notify button for the live stream class. It's already set up. I don't know if it's going to be the first or the eighth. One of those days, I'll, I'll drop uh, another video um, with more information on that, depending on when I get the wire bundle, because I need enough wire for this. Uh, again, we're going to count out the, um, we're going to measure out how much wire we need with this uh, easy, this um, frame right here. It's a bigger frame than the frame that I'm currently using. So we're going to do all that and uh, more. Um, so if you're interested in the class, it's going to be an all-day class. It'll start around 7, 7.30 a.m. And uh, make sure you have all your equipment ready. Or if, uh, you know, um, you're interested in that, uh, I do recommend that you leave a comment and introduce yourself just so we have that information and we're ready to go. And I have some, some idea of who, uh, who's in the class at the, um, at that time. So, uh, again, I appreciate everything from everybody. Um, if you haven't subscribed to old man, Nathan's channel, make sure you subscribe to his channel. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in merchandise, I have a whole bunch of merchandise on my website, beneficencetv.com. And if you're interested in accelerating my research at all, um, I do need, I think it's only about $50 and I can complete my order for the uh, bundle of wire. So to accelerate that, if you would like to donate, that is Beneficence TV um, Cash App. The link is in the description of my channel. And again, I appreciate everybody for everything. I appreciate everybody for stopping by. Um, shorts and lab coat, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I appreciate it. Yeah, cheers. Nathan saves the day. <laughs> uh, oh, he said, how many parallel bars are in the inner ring, our outer ring, standard road and coil? So um, this is a good question and it varies because there's different um, patterns. There's different, um, frames that you can get for the coil and it all depends on what scale or fractal you're using of the geometry but um mine i think uses 11 or 12 oh thanks guys all right you guys uh you guys are awesome you guys take care and uh i'll see you tomorrow for our fringe think tank and if i get the stereo amp receiver i'll see you before then for some testing of zero point energy all right, guys. Have a good night. Thanks, everybody. Oh, one second. Oh, there we go.